Mm-hmm. You say something. Now everybody can hear us.
Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I declare the meeting is called to an order. Please take a seat. Please. Dear delegates, good morning again. Now the meeting is called to an order. Please take a seat. Dear delegates, we have to continue our work. Today, we have item 39, archaeological site of Sabrata, Libya. Uh, Mrs. Nada Al-Hassan, you have the floor to present the next property. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Le rapport sur l'état de conservation du site archéologique de Sabrata en Libye se trouve dans le document 7 à Ad à la page 59 et à la page 56 en anglais, donc 59 en français. L'état parti n'a malheureusement pas fourni de rapport sur l'état de conservation du site, comme demandé par le comité à sa 40e session. Aucune information récente sur l'état de conservation du bien n'est disponible, à part le rapport d'activité de l'UNOSAT, sachant que le site de Sabrata est occupé par les groupes d'extrémistes armés. Le rapport intérimaire de l'UNOSAT de décembre 2016 fait état de 620 nouvelles constructions aux abords du site de Sabrata entre 2012 et 2016. L'absence d'une carte officielle indiquant clairement les limites du site et celle de sa zone tampon empêche de contrôler ses empiètements. Le projet de décision souligne la nécessité d'un engagement majeur de la communauté internationale dans la protection de ce bien. Le projet de décision vous est soumis à la page 60 en français et 57 en anglais. Et, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, I would also like to say that the site of Sept Leptismania is still to be presented. It was just before uh, Sabrata, maybe after this one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Nada, for your wonderful presentation. I now invite committee members to express their comments or interventions. Any comments? Yeah, Ikomos would like to take the floor. Ikomos. Uh, okay. Okay, Ikomos. Now the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Ikomos has already made a general uh, intervention on the Libyan properties and won't need to add any, anything further for each individual property, Mr. Chair. Okay, now I invite the committee members to express uh, committee uh, comments or cure question or intervention. Distinguished representative of Tunisia, uh, floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. En examinant bien uh, les différents sites de, de la Libye, l'on se rend compte que la situation dans ce pays n'est pas très différente de la situation en, en Syrie. Or, pour ce pays-là, on a prévu une décision générale, point, point 50. Je voudrais savoir s'il n'est pas possible, notamment pour la Libye, de prévoir une décision générale puisque tous ces sites subissent le, le conflit armé et sont à peu près dans la même situation. Merci.
Okay, I think it's time to give uh, Mrs. Nada just to give an answer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, oui, uh, bien sûr, il est possible, uh, à l'instar de la Syrie et uh, de la RDC pour l'Afrique, de faire une uh, décision générale qui regroupe les activités et les informations qui sont transversales à la situation libyenne en général. Je vous remercie. Any other comments? Thank you very much. Following the intervention from Tunisia, um, I think we can make a draft um, and share it with you. Um, but uh, this would need to be also then translated, and uh, I think we can provide it throughout uh, because the item stays open. Um, Nada, we can do it maybe then um, by tomorrow. By the end of the day. Uh, well, et, et, si vous me permettez, ce serait bien si la, euh, le distingué délégué de la Tunisie pouvait nous clarifier si cette décision générale pour eux est requise pour ce comité-ci ou si euh, ils veulent bien que ce soit pour le comité prochain. En vérité, euh, dans, dans ma tête, c'était de le prévoir pour le comité prochain, pas, pas pour celui-ci. Okay, thank you, Tunisia. Any other comments, intervention? I see none. Thank you very much. I now invite you to adopt the draft decision 41.com 7A.39. Uh, Mr. Juma, uh, Mr. Laporte, have you received any amendments on the draft decision proposals? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have not received an amendment for this item. Thank you. Mm. All right. Okay, I see none. I declare decision 41 come 7A-39 adopted. Now we are moving on to item 44, ancient city of Aleppo. Once again, Mrs. Nada Al Hassan, you have the floor to present the next property. Uh, if you allow me, Mr. Chair, uh, yesterday we ended our Libyan uh, sites review uh, at number 37, site of Cyrene. And uh, if you, um, with your permission, I think we should also do the archaeological site of Leftis Magna, which is number 38. It was right after Sabrata, uh, with your permission, please. Okay, we will go back to uh, number 38, and I give the floor to Mrs. Nada once again. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Le site archéologique de Leptis Magna uh, a son rapport de con de, sur l'état de conservation uh, dans le document 7 à ad, page 57 en français, 54 en anglais. L'État parti n'a pas fourni de rapport sur l'état de conservation de Leptis Magna, comme demandé par le comité à sa 40e session, à cause de la situation du pays, bien sûr. Aucune information récente sur l'état de conservation du bien n'est disponible, à part, comme pour le site de Sabrata, le rapport de l'UNOSAT sur les images satellites prises en décembre 2016 et qui font une comparaison en 2011 et 2016 en trouvant 50 580 nouvelles constructions aux abords de l'Ectis Magna. L'absence d'une carte indiquant euh, clairement les limites du bien et celle de sa zone tampon empêche de protéger le bien de ses empiètements, c'est le cas de tous les sites libyens. D'autres sources, dont un reportage télévisé très remarqué, font état d'initiatives par la société civile qui s'organise pour protéger euh, le bien d'attaques intentionnelles potentielles grâce à un système de rondes de civils armés et qui œuvre à sensibiliser les communautés locales à la valeur de ce site archéologique. Le projet de décision souligne la nécessité d'un engagement majeur de la communauté internationale dans la protection de ce bien. Le projet de décision vous est soumis, page 58 en français et 55 en anglais. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président.
Uh, E-commerce, you have some comments? No. In that case. Thank you very much. And are there any comments from committee members or state parties? I see none. No. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Ajuma, rapporteur, uh, if there are any uh, proposed uh, amendments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, we don't have any amendment on this item. Okay, thank you, Mr. Juma. I see none. Therefore, I declare decision 41, come 78 adopted. Aleppo. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Mesdames et Messieurs, nous abordons à présent les sites de la Syrie. Vous vous souviendrez que le conflit armé en Syrie a commencé en 2011 et qu'il engendre de grandes souffrances humaines et de nombreux dégâts sur le patrimoine culturel, largement relayé dans la presse internationale. Je vous prie de noter que le rapport relatif à l'ensemble des biens syriens vous sera présenté après la revue des six biens syriens inscrits sur la liste du patrimoine mondial en péril. Je commence donc par l'ancienne ville d'Alep, dont vous voyez euh, les photos sur les écrans. Le rapport sur l'état de conservation de l'ancienne ville d'Alep se trouve dans le document 7 à Ad, à la page 61 en anglais et 65 en français. Alep a subi jusqu'en décembre 2016 des dégâts et destructions d'une vaste étendue et aux conséquences d'une extrême gravité qui affecte lourdement les populations et leur patrimoine culturel. Il en découle que le centre historique d'Alep se trouve aujourd'hui à l'image de ce que furent Berlin ou Varsovie à la fin de la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. Cependant, les combats se sont arrêtés en décembre 2016 et la réhabilitation de la ville a commencé. Le document devant vous énumère les nouveaux dégâts survenus depuis la 40e session du Comité du patrimoine mondial. Les photos que vous voyez, surtout la photo générale de, de, du cratère donc, dans la ville d'Alep, ces photos sont, euh, ont été prises lors d'une mission de l'UNESCO en janvier 2017. Cette mission très courte, de quelques heures seulement, a fait un point sur l'ampleur des dégâts sur la partie accessible du centre historique et elle a convenu avec les autorités locales et la Direction générale des Antiquités et des musées de Syrie de certaines mesures d'urgence pour le bien, comme la mise en sécurité et la consolidation des bâtiments historiques, ainsi que le traitement des débris. <rire> Suite à cette mission, en avril 2017, l'UNESCO a dépêché deux professionnels nationaux pour résider à Alep et euh, donc coordonner, euh, autant que euh, faire se peut, la culture et l'éducation, donc les activités culture et éducation. En mars 2017, le Centre du patrimoine mondial a organisé une réunion technique de coordination à Beyrouth portant sur Alep, à laquelle ont pris part les représentants de sept institutions syriennes, six entités internationales ayant travaillé à Alep. La cinquantaine de participants a reconnu l'urgence de mettre en place un système de coordination et de coopération pour aborder l'immense tâche à venir, alors même que les populations commencent à se réinstaller dans la vieille ville. À cet égard, ils ont souligné le rôle crucial de l'UNESCO en matière de coordination internationale. Ils ont convenu de la nécessité d'une planification stratégique intégrée et participative pour la ville d'Alep et d'actions prioritaires en lien avec les besoins de première nécessité de la population et leur sécurité, notamment en termes de stabilité structurelle. Cependant, depuis cette réunion de mars dernier, il n'a pas été aisé d'établir des mécanismes de coordination et de planification à la hauteur de la tâche colossale que représente la réhabilitation et la revitalisation d'Alep, ou ce que dans le jargon de l'ONU on appelle le recouvrement, recovery en anglais. Il est à noter que cette coordination est nécessaire au niveau national, international et interagence au niveau de l'ONU. De nouvelles informations nous sont très récemment parvenues grâce à un expert en conservation qui collabore régulièrement avec l'UNESCO et qui s'est rendu à Alep. 
Cet expert note que les photos et les images satellites ne relatent aucunement l'échelle des dégâts et que les explosions souterraines gigantesques survenues dans le pourtour de la citadelle d'Alep ont causé des dégâts comparables au résultat d'un séisme à plusieurs épicentres. Des cratères au centre de la ville atteignent plus de 10 mètres de profondeur. Les structures et les matériaux se sont désolidarisés sous l'effet des violentes explosions et présentent aujourd'hui des problèmes structurels et de sécurité de taille nécessitant un plan urgent de gestion des risques. Il semble que la ville soit libre de mines antipersonnelles, à l'exception du fossé entourant la citadelle qu'il conviendra qu'il faudra déminer. Environ 2000 habitants ont réintégré la vieille ville depuis l'arrêt des combats dans les conditions que je vous ai citées. Une multiplicité d'acteurs privés et institutionnels initie des interventions ad hoc et la situation actuelle empêche la Direction générale des Antiquités et des musées de jouer son rôle de contrôle de qualité. Les demandes de permis de restauration sont délivrées dans la journée, mais aucun accompagnement ni contrôle de sécurité ou de qualité n'est hélas mis en place. En l'absence de planification, de système de coordination et de contrôle de qualité, les travaux sont en cours sont très préoccupants. La complexité et la restauration de la revitalisation d'Alep est sans mesure et prendra des décennies. Les ouvriers et les matériaux traditionnels tels que le bois manquent. Les architectes et ingénieurs possèdent bien les compétences requises, mais sont sous une grande pression de travail. Il est urgent de mobiliser dès aujourd'hui tous les efforts et toutes les ressources disponibles pour faire face à la question de la sécurité des habitants à travers la gestion des risques et des travaux de stabilisation similaires à des travaux post-séisme et de développer en parallèle une stratégie holistique et intégrée pour la ville d'Alep au niveau de toute l'agglomération suivant la recommandation sur les paysages urbains historiques. Cette approche devrait prendre en compte des facteurs urbains, sociaux, économiques, juridiques, financiers, techniques, mais aussi historiques, archéologiques, déontologiques et symboliques. Il conviendra aussi de développer des mécanismes opérationnels à la hauteur de l'urgence humanitaire et de la rapidité avec laquelle la vie reprend à Alep. C'est à la lumière de ces nouvelles données préoccupantes que le Centre du patrimoine mondial et les organisations consultatives proposent une révision de la décision qui vous a été distribuée hier. Monsieur le Président, l'ICOMOS et ensuite l'ICROM souhaiteraient prendre la parole. Merci. Ok, thank you, Mr. Sanada. Now I give the floor first, ICOMOS. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, last year, the State of Conservation Report noted that it was then impossible for the State Party to fully assess the scope of damage to this property. This year, following the taking back of control of the city in December 2016, the State Party has started to provide detailed information on destruction. And for Aleppo, the full alarming extent of what has transpired and the scope of its destru destruction is now becoming apparent with whole sectors of the city being completely destroyed and up to 70% still inaccessible due to mines. Although it is reported that 50 historic buildings have been damaged, more than 3,000 individual structures have also been damaged or destroyed, and these were the buildings that made up the urban grain of the city. In one sense, the task of repairing the damaged monuments is manageable and the rebuilding of the minaret is being given priority as a symbolic action. But if Aleppo is to emerge as a dynamic and coherent city with links to its past, then the recovery of the property needs to be multidimensional, encompassing immediate as well as longer term actions, and be coordinated and motivated by the needs and aspirations of its inhabitants, drawn together in, into an overarching strategy. Although all these thoughts were well articulated in the Beirut Technical Coordination Meeting, which was held in March, as has been mentioned, such coordination is not yet happening. A strategic approach appears not yet to be in place. And meanwhile, the 2,000 people who have returned are being given construction permits to build. It would seem that time is short for some sort of strategic and coordinating approach to be put in place spanning both national and local levels, 
and without it, the opportunity for evidence to be gathered of what is left, for proper structural and archaeological assessments to be undertaken, and for the city to be rebuilt in a way that builds and reflects its past, may have been lost. If Aleppo is to be reborn as a major cultural city, the framework for its revival needs to be drawn out as soon as possible. Mr. Chair, I believe Ikram would also like to comment. Thank you, Suzanne. Now, I think Mr. Ikram has something to add up. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Along with our colleagues at the World Heritage Center and ECOMOS, ECRUM deplores the destruction of the cultural heritage and indeed the very fabric of the city of Aleppo as part of the, the conflict situation. The complexity of addressing the problems are be, that are being faced in Aleppo are enormous and there is a need for the development of an overall methodological framework for the recovery effort. As a site on the World Heritage List, outstanding universal value must be safeguarded but it must be considered as part of a larger number of issues such as structural stability, use of materials and construction techniques, and the long-term needs of the population. All of these issues must be balanced with much shorter humanitarian needs and the desire of city's residents to begin to rebuild their buildings and their lives as soon as it is safe and possible to do so. We therefore suggest a strategic and integrated approach rather than an ad hoc building by building approach. This must be based on necessary documentation and must be supported by dialogue with the national and local governments and the local community to ensure that the, this complex situation can be resolved in a positive way for all stakeholders and for the benefit of the important heritage of Aleppo. ECROM also underlines the need for short-term short support for risk management damage assessment, first aid, and stabilization for the heritage, especially given the news reported by UNESCO in regard to the extent of the damage caused by some of the underground explosions. Long-term support for recovery efforts, uh, including capacity building, must be supported by the international community, including working with affected communities and professionals on restoration techniques, urban conservation issues, and working with traditional uh, construction techniques, just to name a few. ECROM will, of course, offer to continue, uh, to continue its collaboration with the State Party in ongoing capacity building activities in the country and in this, at this site. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you so much. And now the floor is open. I recognize distinguished Ambassador Cabral Moraes. You have the floor, Excellency. Thank you very much, um, Mr. President. I, 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 I'll, I'll uh, address the, the sites, uh, Syrian sites as a whole, um, because I, uh, due to the <laughs> tragic uh, situation that still prevails, it's very difficult to separate one issue from the other. And uh, as it has been mentioned, we need an integrated approach. Uh, Monsieur le Président, j'ai des souvenirs personnels très émus du début du conflit en Syrie en 2011, lorsqu'au Conseil de sécurité, nous essayons, avec d'autres, de mettre fin à la tuerie et à la souffrance en ce pays. Hélas, ces efforts furent vains. Alors, les morts se comptaient par dizaines, bientôt par centaines et très vite par milliers. Aujourd'hui, les victimes se comptent dans des centaines de milliers, des millions de réfugiés et de personnes déplacées, un pays détruit et une société ravagée. Incontournablement, les biens qui témoignent de l'extraordinaire richesse historique et culturelle de ce pays ont aussi connu les ravages, la destruction et le pillage. Dans certains cas, malheureusement trop nombreux, la reconstruction et la récupération du patrimoine mondial syrien s'avèrent pratiquement impossibles. Ce sera de toute façon un travail d'Hercule multidimensionnel, comme l'a souligné ICOMOS. Mais la communauté internationale doit se mobiliser pour faire face à cette tâche, à cette véritable responsabilité historique, une fois que les conditions le permettent. Un mot d'appréciation est dû aux efforts des autorités syriennes, et en particulier ceux de la Direction générale des entités et musées, pour la protection et conservation du patrimoine mondial en Syrie, dans des circonstances extrêmement difficiles. 
Monsieur le Président, le Portugal soutient sans réserve tous les efforts politiques qui visent à ramener la paix et les dialogues en Syrie, afin de mettre fin à une catastrophe qui a déjà trop duré et de permettre la reconstruction du pays, le retour des réfugiés et des déplacés et l'édification d'une société basée sur le respect des libertés individuelles, le pluralisme culturel et religieux, la justice et les droits de l'homme. Nous continuons à cet égard à appuyer sans réserve les efforts du représentant spécial du secrétaire général des Nations Unies, Stéphane de Mistura, et nous saluons sa détermination courageuse. Je me réjouis de l'adoption par le Conseil de sécurité par consensus la résolution 2347 en mars dernier et le rôle pionnier de cette résolution concernant la protection du patrimoine. L'adoption de la résolution 2199 en février 2015, avait déjà marqué un tournant dans l'articulation entre le Conseil de sécurité et l'UNESCO et avait inscrit les liens à un trois qui existe entre culture et sécurité globale. Ceci nous rappelle que le système multilatéral et les Nations unies en particulier restent le meilleur garant de la paix et de la stabilité internationale malgré les attaques dont le multilatéralisme est l'objet. Alep, Basra, le crack des chevaliers, Damas, Palmyre, témoignent de ce qu'il y a de pire et de mieux chez l'homme. Le génie créateur d'un côté et l'arme destructrice et la haine de l'autre. La récupération et la sauvegarde de ce patrimoine unique ne sera pas possible sans la paix et le dialogue. Travaillons donc pour parvenir à cette paix et à l'établissement d'un vrai dialogue au sein de la société syrienne, tout en veillant à ce que de nouvelles destructions du patrimoine mondial n'aient pas lieu. C'est là notre tâche prioritaire. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Now I give the floor to distinguished ambassador of Poland, followed by Turkey and the Philippines. Thank you, Chair. Of course, I'm very much in line with what's just been said by my distinguished colleague from Portugal, but we would like to express as well our solidarity and compassion with the people of Aleppo and all the sites and cities so painfully harmed because of the armed conflicts. We feel profoundly touched having in our memory ruins of Warsaw and other towns and cities in Poland. That's why we see a need for a general approach concerning conservation and possible uh, rehabilitation of these precious treasures of the world culture. Perhaps it would be useful to share the experiences and uh, continuous efforts undertaken by conservators from all over the world. This issue was discussed in Warsaw and Krakow so successfully during World Heritage Young Professionals Forum has just ended before the session and which was expressed in the declaration presented at the beginning of our meeting and young people from all over the world, they were very much uh, touched and they expressed the need to adopt po possible measures of rehabilitation like reconstruction and other possible uh, uh, achievements of modern science. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Poland. I now give the floor to the distinguished delegate of Turkey. Yeah, you have the floor, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would also like to make general remarks on all uh, Syrian uh, uh, properties. Unfortunately, despite all the efforts, the conflict in Syria continues to have devastative impact on World Heritage properties of the country. We deplore all deliberate attacks to destroy, to destroy the country's unique uh, cultural heritage. We therefore welcome UNESCO's efforts to assist the state party in continuous and sustained efforts to safeguard its cultural heritage. Let me particularly underline UNESCO's leadership in raising the awareness of the international community, particularly through the renowned Unite for Heritage campaign. The revised roadmap concerning Syria's tangible and intangible heritage, the methods to coordinate ongoing initiatives on documentation, damage assessment and capacity building efforts is an important document and the international community should mobilize its resources to focus on future emergency, long-term recovery and protection plans. 
We also welcome the appointments of two national officers by UNESCO, one for culture and one for education. We believe this will help to ensure coordination with local and national authorities for the implementation of activities for the recovery of the properties. As international community, we should all take effective measures for the fight against illicit trafficking of cultural objects in line with the UN Security Council resolutions 2199 and 2347. In this respect, I would like to reiterate Turkey's commitment to support, to continue to support all international efforts to safeguard serious cultural heritage. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Delegate of Philippines. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In also delivering a general statement, the Philippines joins the international community in deploring the continuing armed conflict besetting the state party of Syria, as well as, the, as its devastating effects both on the people and the six world heritage sites of the state party. We would like to commend heritage conservation professionals and the local communities and their efforts and commitment to protect this property, especially in the face of extremely difficult and dangerous conditions. We would also like to thank the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies for their continued support to the State Party in the identification of the necessary corrective measures and the development of desired states of conservation for the removal of the properties from the list of World Heritage in danger as soon as the situation allows. For the ancient city of Aleppo, the Philippines echoes the committee's call for the State Party to carry out appropriate recovery plans and approaches and detailed studies on optimal approaches prior to undertaking any restoration work in the property. We appreciate Poland's appeal to the international community to come together in mutual support for the rehabilitation and heritage conservation of the ancient city of Aleppo. For the site of Palmyra, the Philippines appreciates the State Party's actions to protect, document, and repair the Palmyra Museum's collections and encourages the State Party to continue doing so in close coordination with the Heritage Center and the advisory bodies. Lastly, the Philippines joins call to all UNESCO member states for cooperation in fighting against the illicit trafficking of cultural heritage coming from Syria as per UN Security Council Resolution 2199 as well as protecting cultural heritage sites during armed conflict as per UN Security Council Resolution 2347. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Madam Ambassador. Now I give the floor to distinguished representative of Lebanon. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Le Liban salue les efforts de l'UNESCO en faveur de la Syrie sœur dévastée par la guerre. La directrice générale, Madame Bokova, ainsi que le bureau régional de l'UNESCO à Beyrouth s'efforcent d'aider le Liban, qui héberge plus de quart de sa population en réfugiés syriens. S'il est vrai que le défi principal est celui de l'éducation, où nous avons plus de 300 000 élèves syriens qui partagent les salles de classe avec les élèves libanais, il n'en demeure pas moins que le problème du patrimoine syrien est à l'avant-garde de nos préoccupations. Et les autorités libanaises, avec le concours du Centre du patrimoine mondial de l'UNESCO, endiguent efficacement tout trafic de biens et s'apprêtent à coopérer avec l'UNESCO et les parties concernées à participer à la réhabilitation de ce patrimoine précieux. Et je vous remercie. Thank you, uh, Any other comments, uh, intervention? Okay, I recognize the uh, distinguished representative of Kuwait. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, you have the floor, sir. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Tout d'abord, je veux remercier le comité, le Centre de patrimoine mondial et en plus euh, Madame Nada Al-Hassan pour leur travail dans la région arabe et même les Cormes. Euh, la série se trouve dans la zone que le groupe terroriste tels que Daesh ont détruit les patrimoines culturels, ce qui incite inclusion dans la liste de patrimoines en péril de l'ancienne ville d'Alab et les vieilles villes de Basra, le vieux Damas et le vieux fort et Salahaddin al Ayoubi et les vieux villages détruits dans le nord de la Syrie. En raison de l'instabilité de la situation économique en Syrie, 
et la destruction massive infligée à ces sites. Nous vous recommandons de garder le site mentionné sur la liste de patrimoine en péril. Merci. Thank you, Kuwait. I see none. So I now invite you to adopt the draft decision 41.78.44. Mr. Juma, my rapporteur, have you received any amendments on the draft decision proposed? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have received amendment, but this time from Secretary. The one just to review this draft decision, 7.com 48.44. As you can see from the screen, can you go up please? So the paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 remain the same. The paragraph 6 has been deleted, a new paragraph 6 is proposed, which read, I also express also express its deep concern about the instability of building within the property and urge the state party to undertake a detailed risk assessment and emergency consolida consolida consolidation work for concern in structure in order to guarantee the safety of inhabitants. Paragraph number seven has also been modified. The new paragraph reads, encourage the state party to implement the action agreed upon at the international coordination meeting organized by UNESCO in March 2017, and also ask the state party to allow sufficient time for the development of integrated strategic plan for the rehabilitation and revitalization of the property in its broad, broader urban context, in line with the recommendation of historical urban landscape, UNESCO 2011. And then, the other part is deleted. We also go to the last part. In this regard, underline the need of UNESCO to ensure its role. And then we have number eight, also has been modified. Also ask the state party to continue its effort to documenting and assessing damage since December 2016, despite extremely difficult situation. And now we have new nine which has been added some part. The first part say, further express its concern that rehabilitation and restoration works are taking place within property without quality control and recall to the state party that before any works are undertaken at the property, detailed study and extensive field work are required. And also discussion on defining optimal approach, including consideration that goes beyond technical issues, and request the state party to submit to the World Health Center for consideration by advisory body any planning project within and around property prior to the implementation in accordance with Article 172 of operational guidelines. Number nine, original number nine, now become number 10, has no change. Number 11 has no change, just simple topo. Number new, number 12 has no change. Number 13, no change. And number 14 remain as it used to be before. That is the proposed change from committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Juma. And uh, as, uh, okay. Okay, on revised uh, proposed amendment, now floor is open. I now give the floor to first Zimbabwe, followed by Portugal. Uh, Madam Ambassador, you have a floor. Thank you, Chairperson. I would like to find out through you from the Secretariat what has changed from the time of the draft decision, whether the, where this new information is coming from, I also want to ch check this, the number six, where you, the state party was mobilizing recovery of Aleppo, which has now been deleted as the state party stopped doing this. Uh, I just want to understand 
why the, the decision has changed quite, quite, quite uh, extensively. Okay, thank you, Madam Ambassador. I think your question is quite relevant. As uh, this amendment was introduced by Secretariat, I think, uh, uh, Mrs. Nada, you have something to respond. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, maybe I will speak in English to better communicate with the distinguished delegate of Zimbabwe. Uh, the information that reached UNESCO comes uh, from uh, a conservation expert, as uh, I said in my uh, presentation. This is an expert in conservation who worked 30 years uh, in Aleppo and uh, undertook a lot of conservation projects there and knows the, very well the city. Uh, his uh, uh, expertise added to the visit of UNESCO an eye of a structure expert. Uh, he was the one who uh, drew our attention to the stability risks at the buildings that were endangering the safety of inhabitants. Uh, and he compared the stability of the buildings to uh, seismic, uh, you know, post-seismic uh, uh, problems. Uh, in addition, um, the, um, the issue of ad hoc restoration has reached us uh, from several sources, also from the state party itself, which wrote to UNESCO asking for, uh, you know, support in restoring this or that building. And this is also, uh, this was also an opportunity for us to uh, remind them that uh, a risk management and a priority, uh, you know, definition of uh, what needed to be uh, restored uh, first and why had to be drawn uh, uh, and strategic, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, planning should be drawn. So the decision that was uh, distributed to you yesterday um, uh, was, uh, um, uh, you know, agreed upon or discuss with the advisory bodies to take measure of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, grave uh, concern that we have, especially in terms of the safety of the inhabitants, and to really uh, call for strategic approaches to Aleppo and not fall into ad hoc uh, uh, decision making that would, at, at the end, transform the city very, very rapidly uh, without, uh, you know, due consideration to its importance. Um, regarding uh, your uh, question on on the, uh, paragraph number six. This paragraph was moved uh, um, uh, further. It's, uh, it's, it was just deleted from here, but it's, it was integrated uh, into um, uh, number, the new eight. Instead of notes, uh, it becomes encourages the state party to continue its efforts. So it was just uh, removed, uh, moved down. It was not deleted. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Nada. Now I give the floor to distinguished representative of Portugal. Excellency, the thank floor you. is yours. Thank you, um, Mr. President. In fact, my, my, uh, I must say from the outset, I can live with this uh, decision, but nevertheless, I had exactly the same uh, number of in, uh, question marks that were raised by my distinguished colleague, the Ambassador of Zimbabwe. And I thank the Secretariat for the clarification. But I still wonder how, for in 24 hours, you uh, suddenly uh, change um, a decision so radically, even if it is, as I believe it is, for, for the best. But uh, coming back to number six, um, I think it is important, uh, as I believe the Secretariat uh, also does, to have a note of encouragement in these uh, uh, decisions vis-a-vis -vis people that work in extremely difficult conditions. Uh, and we cannot forget that, unfortunately, this uh, is a country at war, and it's a very bloody war. Uh, so, but if you I, I'm, I'll, I'll address the, the uh, okay, I, perhaps I can make, make a, an effort and look at the English version. Um, number, the first, number six, the previous one said, notes the efforts mobilized by the state party for the recovery of Aleppo since December, etc. And the new number, eight, would you? Okay, thanks. Uh, no, it's not, it's not, uh, also, now, the new version, which apparently uh, replaces the previous one, says, also encourages the state party 
to continue its efforts in documenting and assessing damages, which is quite different, one must recognize, from what was there previously, unless I'm totally mistaken. But uh, I do perceive uh, some difference in, shall I say, quality of the two uh, uh, paragraphs. So uh, I think we, they, they, they are compatible. Uh, uh, one can say that uh, we note the efforts mobilized by the state party uh, for the recovery of Aleppo since December uh, 2016 and also encourage the state party to continue, etc. We can, we, can, we, we can do both. And I think that will uh, be um, a fair uh, solution for this uh, issue. Although, as I said at the beginning, I can live with it. But I rather uh, not uh, forget some of its important elements. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lambesta. Now, uh, Tanzania, followed by Tunisia. Uh, Tanzania, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Excellency Chair. I want to go in line with what the distinguished delegate from Zimbabwe and from Portugal they are talking about. The intention of Para 6 to me still holds, and I think we need to, to take it in, in, into, our, into, our, into our decision to, to note the efforts. Uh, what we are saying in number eight, we are encouraging something else, and I would go with Portugal uh, with the statement he's proposing. Tanzania will go in line with what Portugal is proposing, uh, but making sure we are noting the efforts mobilized by the state party. It's very important taking into consideration the insecurity in the state party and uh, what is being done. Uh, we think it's an encouragement that we should note that effort. Thank you. Thank you, Tanzania. Now the floor is Tunisia. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Uh, la Tunisie souhaite rejoindre le, les propos et l'analyse uh, présentée par Son Excellence l'Ambassadeur du Portugal, en ce sens que uh, la proposition de supprimer l'ancien point 6, supprimer une idée, et ce que l'on avait l'intention de mettre sur le point 8, en était une autre. Donc nous sommes tout à fait à l'aise avec la proposition portugaise qui joint donc les deux idées, à la fois appuyer les efforts de l'État parti dans un contexte extrêmement difficile, mais également l'encourager à poursuivre ses efforts en matière de documentation. Donc la version telle qu'elle apparaît maintenant du nouveau point 7 nous convient parfaitement. Merci. Ok, thank you, Tunisia. Ok, distinguished delegates of Lebanon. Uh. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Juste une petite remarque concernant ce nouveau point. On répète deux fois since December 2016. I think we should keep it in the first place and remove it in the second. Yeah, remove it here in order not to have a repetition. Thank you so much. I see no more comments, so I now invite to adopt the draft decision, para by para. Para one, no objection. I see none. Para two. No comments, no objection. Para three. No objection. Para four. I see none. 
Hera five. No objection. Hera six. I see no objection. Hera seven. As amended, no objection. Para, can you scroll up? Uh, para eight. I see no objection. Para nine. Adopted. Para ten. No objection. Para eleven. Adopted. Para twelve. No objection. It's adopted. Para thirteen. I see no objection. Para 14. No comments, no objection. It's adopted. Any comments and the, any objection? Okay, I see none, so I declare the decision for the young <laughs> COM 7A44 rev as amended as a whole. I declare is adopted. Now we move on to 45, ancient city of Bosra. Uh, Mrs. Nada Al Hassan, you have the floor to present the next property. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Le rapport sur l'état de conservation de l'ancienne ville de Bosra en Syrie se trouve dans le document 7 à AD, 65 en anglais et page 68 en français. Les accords conclus entre les parties prenantes ont été respectés cette dernière année, ce qui a permis d'éviter de nouveaux dégâts et qui a rendu possible de la poursuite du travail entrepris par le service des antiquités basé à Bosra. Les photos montrent euh, des, 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 des images de l'année dernière. Donc euh, elles sont vieilles, mais elles montrent quand même les dégâts euh, sur le site. Il importe de saluer tout dialogue, même fragile, avec et entre les communautés locales et la mobilisation de ces dernières pour la sauvegarde du bien et sa protection, malgré les difficultés inhérentes au contexte sécuritaire et politique. Le projet de décision vous est soumis à la page 66 en anglais et 70 en français. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Nada, and I now give the floor to Ecomos. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ecomos has no comment. Okay, there is no comment from Ecomos. Now the floor is open. Okay, I see none. Uh, I'd like to invite you to adopt the draft decision 41.78.45. Mr. Juma, have you received any amendment on the draft decision proposed? Mr. Rapporteur? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have no amendment on this decision. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I declare decision 41, come 78.45, adopted. Now 46, ancient city of Damascus. Once again, Mrs. Nada. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Le rapport sur l'état de conservation de l'ancienne ville de Damas en Syrie se trouve dans le document 7 à Ad à la page 67 en anglais et 70 en français. 
L'UNESCO a effectué une mission d'évaluation rapide en Syrie en avril 2016, où nous nous étions rendus à Palmyre. Et au cours de cette mission, nous avons pu visiter l'ancienne ville d'Alep, de Damas, pardon, et constater d'ailleurs les dégâts des incendies que vous avez vus, que vous voyez sur votre écran. Les principaux dommages subis par Damas sont liés aux incendies qui ont sévi au sein du bien, notamment dans le quartier al asrounia en avril 2016, et plus récemment dans le souk Al-Hamidiyya et le quartier historique protégé de Sarouja, hors des murs, endommageant le tissu urbain avec ses dizaines de boutiques et le bâtiment prénommé la Banque Ottomane du XIXe siècle. Je, je souhaite noter ici que euh, les dégâts causés par la guerre à Damas sont euh, assez minimes. Nous avons fait état dans les euh, sessions précédentes du comité de quelques explosions euh, de voitures, notamment dans la vieille ville, et de quelques euh, donc, obus qui avaient touché la mosquée des Omeyyades, la citadelle et d'autres bâtiments. Mais Damas reste plus ou moins stable. Donc, C'est dans ce contexte que je souhaiterais présenter le problème des incendies. Suite à ces incendies, la municipalité de la vieille ville a procédé à une, à une très grande vitesse à la sécurisation des quartiers endommagés, à la réhabilitation des infrastructures et à la reconstruction des boutiques dans l'urgence, avec comme priorité la protection des habitants et la reprise des activités économiques. Mais malheureusement, les exigences techniques de projets de restauration selon les standards scientifiques et techniques nécessaires, n'ont pas été respectés. Nous sommes revenus dans ces euh, travaux à l'État juste avant les incendies, euh, sans recherche, documentation historique et un travail euh, approfondi de restauration pour un bien du patrimoine mondial. Notons qu'en règle générale, les matériaux traditionnels manquent en Syrie et les restaurations se, réfèrent, donc, euh, se, se font avec des matériaux qui ne sont pas euh, donc, euh, voilà, selon les techniques de construction traditionnelles. À la demande de la Direction générale des Antiquités et des Musées de Syrie, en novembre 2016, euh, l'UNESCO a organisé une réunion euh, de coordination d'urgence, une réunion technique à Beyrouth, donc dans notre bureau, qui a rassemblé des représentants de euh, six institutions syriennes. C'est la mairie de, de Damas qui gère euh, la vieille ville, la mairie de la vieille ville, une ONG locale et des experts syriens aussi internationaux, avec l'objectif d'échanger sur les projets de restauration élaborés et entrepris suite à l'incendie et d'aborder les mesures d'atténuation des risques dans ce quartier en particulier et dans l'ensemble du bien. Rappelons que l'UNESCO et les organisations consultatives déjà en décembre 2013, suite à l'incendie dans les soupes d'Alep, avait fait un plan de réduction des risques, notamment dû aux incendies pour la ville de Damas, par peur que les mêmes problèmes donc, se, 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 se reproduisent à Alep et à Damas. Je mélange les deux villes aujourd'hui. Et donc, ces mesures d'atténuation des risques d'incendie n'ont malheureusement pas été mises en œuvre. Et si on a des incendies répétitifs aujourd'hui, c'est pour cette raison. Donc, lors de cette réunion technique, les participants ont convenu de la nécessité de développer un plan de gestion intégré pour le bien et un plan de gestion des risques, mais aucun des deux plans n'a été commencé. En décembre 2016, un atelier d'assistance technique, donc un petit atelier avec juste des professionnels du patrimoine et des experts de l'UNESCO, donc des membres de la direction des antiquités et des experts de l'UNESCO, se sont penchés sur des plans coupe, façade, photo, pour travailler sur le projet de restauration de, du bâtiment prénommé la Banque Ottomane, donc du 19e siècle, le seul qui a survécu donc à, à cet incendie. La révision du projet a été euh, donc recommandée pour le respect de la conception originale du bâtiment en se basant sur une documentation exhaustive et un diagnostic technique des dommages. Des mesures d'urgence doivent être mises en œuvre dans les plus brefs délais à Damas pour des raisons de sécurité et pour éviter une dégradation supplémentaire des structures de ce bâtiment et d'autres bâtiments dans la vieille ville. Notons qu'aujourd'hui, avec le conflit autour de Damas, beaucoup des euh, boutiques, au lieu de stocker leurs affaires inflammables, leurs, leurs marchandises inflammables à l'extérieur de la ville, les stockent dans la ville. Donc c'est vraiment un... un, un euh, le risque est très très élevé à Damas. Euh, 
Le projet de décision vous est soumis à la page 69 en anglais et 73 en français. Monsieur le Président, l'ICOMOS et ensuite l'ICROM souhaiteraient prendre la parole, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Ok, merci, M. Sonada. Donc, je vous Merci, M. le Président. Le projet a été inscrit comme une ville historique pour son dense urbain fabrique et pour la façon dont son layout reflète multiples layers de l'époque grecque et romaine à l'époque ottoman. Même avant les fires récentes, la vulnérabilité des bâtiments urbains à la manque de maintenance traditionnelle et de conservation et l'érosion des attributs relatifs à la spread des activités industrielles semi-industrielles sont de concern, comme exprimé dans le statement d'état statement de l'outstanding universal value. This vulnerability is significant now at a time of response to the damage that has been inflicted from fires and which still continue. If traditional practices had been the norm with ade adequate supply of traditional materials and the availability of craftspeople, then a rapid response to the damage could have been entirely satisfactory. As things stand, rapid responses appear to be leading to the use of modern materials as a matter of course and without rebuilding work being defined as part of an overall recovery plan or strategy. It would be unfortunate indeed if work done in response to the trauma and fire reinforces the damage and contributes to the erosion of attributes of OUV. ICOMOS underscores the need to shore up and support buildings where possible and, even though it appreciates that this approach might take longer, to ensure the strict use of traditional techniques and materials in order to pre prevent further damage and erosion to the hugely important urban fabric of the property. Mr. Chair, Ikram, uh, Ikram would also like to comment. Okay, now it's the turn of Ikram. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. We would just like to make a quick point in relation to the disaster risk management um, issues related to this, to this property. As you've heard by both my colleagues at the World Heritage Center and, and ECOMOS, uh, one of the main uh, conservation issues is the significant fire events that have been taking place in the recent past. And this points for a need um, in terms of the future to, to develop strategic responses to managing fire risk. These strategic responses should include identification of the most likely causes of these fires, um, measures for mitigation uh, of the identified fire risks where possible, uh, and finally, um, distribution of uh, necessary fire equipment and other necessary infrastructure which would allow for a quicker emergency response. It is recognized that at the moment, uh, capacities to carry out actions uh, by the state party may be reduced, but given the seriousness of this problem, uh, seriousness of this problem, it is important for the state party to try to improve uh, its ability to respond to these emergencies in a, in a more rapid manner. Toward this end, uh, ECROM has been uh, supporting work of some uh, of uh, the participants of some of our previous disaster risk management courses uh, in developing uh, small projects to help with the issues related to emergency response in a more rapid manner. And those projects have been carried out uh, with the, the support of the Prince Klaus Fund. Um, recovery efforts also must be carried out in a strategic and methodological way uh, prior to approving uh, individual restoration or reconstruction projects. And it would be useful for the state party to develop a clear approach to restoration and, uh, and reconstruction that takes into account the outstanding universal value of the property, the traditional materials and techniques, and of course the social and economic aspects of the site. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Jokin. I now invite the committee members to express their comments or questions. Now floor is open. I see none. I now invite you to adopt the draft decision 41.78-46. Mr. Juma, I'm wondering whether you received any uh, amendment. Thanks, Chairman. We don't have an amendment on this item. Uh, Thank you very much. Is there any uh, comment, any questions, any objections? I see none. I declare decision 41, com 7A-46 adopted. Now we move on to 47 ancient villages of northern Syria. Um, 
Mrs. Nada, once again, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Le rapport sur l'état de conservation des villages antiques du nord de la Syrie se trouve dans le document 7 AAD à la page 70 en anglais et 75 en français. Le rapport de l'état parti fait état de difficultés d'accès au site et de dommages affectant certaines de ses composantes, notamment des fouilles illégales, des constructions illégales, euh, la collecte et la destruction de pierres anciennes afin de les réutiliser pour des constructions nouvelles, mais aussi l'occupation de certains sites par les personnes déplacées. Cependant, soulignons qu'un dialogue a été établi avec certaines composantes des populations locales pour la protection de ce bien en série. Le projet de décision vous est soumis à la page 72 en anglais et page 76 en français. Il relate la vive préoccupation du Comité du patrimoine mondial face à la situation du site et euh, le manque d'informations détaillées sur les dommages subis. Vous pouvez voir sur la photo euh, le, le, le bâtiment, disons, le plus emblématique de ce site en série, le site de Saint-Siméon, avec euh, donc euh, la photo avant-après. Euh, et ce site a notamment été utilisé pour euh, des entraînements militaires. Donc euh, la préoccupation est grande. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. Uh, I'm wondering, any uh, further comments uh, from ECOMOS or ECROM? No. Now the floor is open. I see none. Now I'd like to invite you to adopt the draft decision 41, com 78, at 47. Mr. Juma, uh, any amendments? We don't have any amendment for this item. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Are there any uh, comments or objections? I see none. I declare decision 41, come 7A.47 adopted. Let's continue 48. Clark de Chevalier and Kalat Salah Eldin. Once again, I'd like to invite uh, Mrs. Nada to explain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good pronunciation in Arabic also. Le rapport sur l'état de conservation du crack des chevaliers et Qal'at Salahaddin en Syrie se trouve dans le document 7 à Ad, à la page 73 en anglais et 77 en français. Le rapport indique que la Direction générale des Antiquités et des musées de Syrie, la DGAM, a poursuivi les travaux de documentation et de modélisation du monument avec divers partenaires, dont Iconem, qu'on a vu à notre événement du premier jour du comité. L'état du bien et les consolidations d'urgence effectuées en 2014 par l'état parti ont été examinées par les experts de l'UNESCO lors de l'atelier d'assistance technique que je vous mentionnais en parlant de Damas, parce que cet atelier s'est penché aussi sur le crack en décembre dernier en 2016. Ces travaux de consolidation, dont vous voyez des photos ici, donc euh, avec euh, des éléments euh, en bois, euh, a été effectué de manière provisoire avec des matériaux disponibles alors, qui, qui aujourd'hui euh, s'avèrent inadaptés à la durée pour les charges qu'ils soutiennent. Donc, ce qui était une mesure d'urgence nécessaire il y a trois ans, aujourd'hui euh, devient euh, problématique parce que les bâtiments euh, sont, ont besoin d'une restauration pérenne. Il est recommandé de réaliser les travaux de restauration de petite et moyenne échelle afin d'éviter des dégâts supplémentaires sur le bien. Mais bien sûr, il n'est pas question que pour les destructions de grande échelle qui requièrent une interprétation historique, que des travaux de restauration complexe soient faits avant que des études détaillées euh, donc euh, nécessaires pour ce genre de, 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 de bâtiments avec cette valeur euh, soient mises en œuvre. Le projet de décision vous est soumis à la page 75 en anglais et 79 en français. Monsieur le Président, l'ICOMOS souhaiterait prendre la parole, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Ok, thank you. I'll give the floor, ICOMOS. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, ICOMOS also notes that all the emergency, although emergency consolidation works have been undertaken, there is a need to begin to address the longer term overall conservation and stability of this large property. And in order to move to this wider can canvas, as soon as the security situation allows, 
there would be a need for a thorough and multidisciplinary investigation into the structural stability of the fortress as well as detailed documentation in order to identify priorities. The proposed reactive monitoring mission should be the opportunity to consider these issues and how a conservation plan might be developed to frame the conservation challenges of the property and to consider how that these might be developed in a strategic manner. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ikomos. And Ikrom, you have something to add? No. Now the floor is open. I see none. So now is the time to adopt the decision. And Mr. Rapporto, uh, do you? We don't have any amendment okay. on this okay, proposal thank decision. Thank, thank you so you. much. OK, I think that there is no more comment and objections. So I declare decision 41 comes 7, 8, or 48 adopted. Now we move on to 49, site of Palmyra. Uh, I'd like to invite Mrs. Nada once again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Le rapport sur l'état de conservation du site de Palmyre en Syrie se trouve dans le document 7 AAD à la page 76 en anglais et 80 en français. Le site de Palmyre a été de nouveau occupé par des groupes extrémistes armés entre, les 11, euh, entre le 11 décembre et le 2 mars 2017, 11 décembre 2016, 2 mars 2017. Pendant cette courte période, le tétrapile et des parties de l'avant-scène du théâtre du mur du prochénium à Palmyre ont été intentionnellement détruits. Vous pouvez voir les images de ces deux destructions sur vos écrans. L'atelier d'assistance technique que nous avions organisé à Beyrouth donc, euh, a euh, permis d'assister le personnel de la direction des antiquités sur les considérations techniques pour le diagnostic des structures, les consolidations d'urgence du portique du temple de Belle, de l'arc de triomphe, de la citadelle et du musée de Palmyre. Il est à noter que la direction des Antiquités adhère au principe selon lequel les travaux de restauration devraient se limiter aux interventions de première nécessité en attendant des conditions adéquates d'intervention qui permettraient un examen complet de la situation et l'identification avec les spécialistes qui connaissent Palmyre, avec la communauté scientifique internationale, les modalités d'intervention appropriées. À cet égard, l'État parti a pris des mesures de consolidation d'urgence du portique du portail du, du Temple de Belle, resté debout après la destruction intentionnelle de la Sela de ce temple. Donc euh, ce, les études sont en cours pour la euh, consolidation de ce portique. Par ailleurs, afin de renforcer la protection du site, l'État parti a soumis au Centre du patrimoine mondial en un temps record une demande de modification mineure des limites du bien qui a été examiné et évalué positivement par l'ICOMOS, et je dois aussi dire en un temps record, et je les remercie. Elle sera soumise à votre approbation lors de l'examen du document 8D. Cette demande propose la création d'une zone tampon d'environ 200 km, ce que le site n'avait pas auparavant, et ça c'est vraiment un très bon travail fait par l'État parti pour la protection de Palmyre. Le projet de décision qui vous est soumis à la page 78 en anglais et 82 en français préconise une approche prudente et graduelle focalisée sur l'évaluation des dégâts, les mesures de consolidation et de protection d'urgence et appelle à la contribution financière de la communauté internationale en faveur de Palmyre. Monsieur le Président, l'ICOMOS souhaiterait prendre la parole, s'il vous plaît. Ok, ICOMOS. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. ICOMOS welcomes the immediate work being undertaken by the State Party to record fully the property, to collect and store valuable fragments, and to undertake emergency and short-term actions, and in particular notes the work uh, to record Palmyra through 3D technology. Unlike De Aleppo and Damascus, there is not the same pressing need for urgent action, and thus time to consider and develop options for appropriate long-term restoration approaches before intervention, interventions are made. We therefore consider that the development of a conservation plan that could articulate and justify the rationale for fu future interventions would be highly appropriate and desirable, and could perhaps evolve as a model for other archaeological properties. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Commerce. And the Chrome document. Okay, thank you. Now floor is open. Uh, I see none. So I'd like to invite to adopt the draft decision 41, come 7A.49. Mr. Juma, can you tell us whether there is an amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have not received an amendment for this proposal. Thank you. I declare decision 41, come 7A.49, adopted. Now, number 50, general decision on the world heritage properties of the Syrian Arab Republic. Once again, I'd like to invite Mrs. Nada to introduce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Le rapport relatif à l'ensemble des biens syriens se trouve à la page 79 en anglais et 83 en français. Et la décision générale pour tous les biens syriens euh, vous est soumise à la page 83 en anglais et 87 en français. Le conflit que connaît la Syrie depuis 2011 s'est poursuivi avec les effets dévastateurs pour sa population et pour son patrimoine. L'État parti a fait état des dommages subis par les sites inscrits sur la liste du patrimoine mondial, mais aussi sur la liste syndicative, particulièrement ceux qui lui sont accessibles. On voit ici une photo de Doura Oropos. De même qu'il a fait partie d'une coopération effective avec les communautés locales qui fut appréciable pour le suivi et la protection de ses biens. Depuis la dernière session du comité en 2016, l'UNESCO a organisé une série de réunions que je vous ai relatées en parlant des sites un par un. En outre, l'UNESCO continue sa collaboration avec la Direction générale des antiquités de musées. C'est une collaboration quasi quotidienne que nous avons avec le personnel de la Direction des antiquités. Euh, et nous travaillons avec eux donc euh, pour, à travers notre bureau de Beyrouth pour la mise en œuvre du projet de sauvegarde d'urgence du euh, patrimoine syrien financé par l'Union européenne, l'Autriche et le gouvernement flamand de Belgique à partir donc de notre bureau de Beyrouth. Ce projet euh, a trois ans et demi maintenant. Le Centre du patrimoine mondial met en œuvre un projet euh, également, euh, aussi financé par le gouvernement flamand de Belgique, dédié au site de Palmyre euh, et donc euh, qui a aussi permis la, la préparation des limites du bien de Palmyre. Cependant, il est très important de signaler à l'attention des membres distingués du Comité du patrimoine mondial qu'au vu de la catastrophe dont nous sommes témoins en Syrie et que les distingués délégués ont évoqué dans leurs remarques générales sur la Syrie, il est crucial de passer à une échelle d'intervention bien plus importante, capable d'affronter l'entreprise colossale qui nous incombe. Et ce, euh, en référence à ce que euh, la distinguée déléguée de Cuba a évoqué hier euh, pour, euh, concernant la stratégie de l'UNESCO euh, sur les situations de conflit. Donc cette, ce travail euh, intégré et, et donc euh, nous qualifions d'entreprise colossale est élaboré en effet en cohérence avec la stratégie de l'UNESCO sur les conflits. Il est fondamental de mobiliser maintenant tous les efforts et toutes les ressources humaines et techniques disponibles afin que la reconstruction en Syrie s'effectue dans le cadre d'une stratégie euh, euh, donc intégrée, globale, holistique et d'une coordination nationale et internationale concertée sans lesquelles la phase post-conflit pourrait avoir des effets très négatifs pour le patrimoine culturel. De même, il serait très important de placer le patrimoine culturel au cœur de la reconstruction et du couvrement du pays, au cœur du dialogue et de la construction de la paix. La, le projet de décision qui vous est soumis à la page 43 en anglais et, 40, et 83 en anglais et 87 en français euh, souligne l'appel lancé à la communauté internationale de soutenir la sauvegarde du patrimoine culturel syrien et notamment par l'intermédiaire du Fonds d'urgence de l'UNESCO pour le patrimoine, et affirme notre encouragement et notre soutien entier, ainsi que notre solidarité avec le peuple syrien et avec les euh, professionnels du patrimoine qui travaillent sans relâche depuis le début du conflit. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Euh, L'ICOMOS et l'ICROM n'ont pas de commentaires à faire sur la décision générale. They wouldn't like Okay, I recognize 
distinguished representative of Lebanon, uh, Mr. Ambassador, floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Le Liban souhaite attirer l'attention sur un point extrêmement important qui commence à apparaître aujourd'hui puisque la reconstruction du patrimoine culturel en Syrie a commencé à passer dans une phase opérationnelle. Ce point extrêmement important a déjà été soulevé dans plusieurs des réunions qui ont été, euh, qui ont été organisées, que ce soit par l'ICOMOS et les organes consultatifs, ou le, euh, le colloque qui a été tenu en, en, en coordination avec l'ICROM et le Louvre de Lens. Ce point un très important concerne la nécessité qu'il y ait un mécanisme de coordination de coordination efficace entre toutes les euh, euh, interventions qui vont se faire euh, au niveau de la réhabilitation, de la reconstruction et de la conservation du patrimoine syrien. Le, euh, un des problèmes essentiels qui risque de, de se poser, c'est qu'il qu risque d'y avoir des interventions différentes venues de parties différentes, d'organes différents, d'états différents, etc., qui risquent à un certain moment, s'il n'y a pas de réelle coordination, d'aboutir à des problèmes d'aboutir euh, oui. à des problèmes de, euh, de, qui, ça risque de faire des actions qui se contredisent, des actions qui ne vont pas dans le bon sens, etc. Je pense qu'il est extrêmement important dans le projet de déclaration d'introduire un paragraphe à ce sujet. Et donc, euh, je pas, nous n'avons pas eu le temps d'envoyer au, au rapporteur notre proposition, mais est-ce qu'il est possible de mettre sur l'écran le projet de décision Il y a juste une proposition d'ajouter un paragraphe et d'intervertir deux paragraphes. Thank you so much for your very constructive input and contribution. Always I'm enlightened by Mr. Jad Tabe, uh, so I think... Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and uh, I very much appreciate uh, the intervention by Mr. Tabet because uh, it's absolutely crucial to ensure the coordination. Um, there are two points I wish to raise. Um, one point is the coordination on the ground. So uh, in terms of Aleppo, uh, UNESCO has already placed um, uh, staff on the ground to ensure the coordination um, in Aleppo itself. But the other point is the discussion in general uh, on the, the approaches to reconstruction and recovery. And as we discussed it under item seven, Poland is organizing a major meeting. So so where we bring all the, uh, um, the different aspects together and the workshops which were done by ICOMOS, by ICROM, we were together in Louvre Lens uh, and at other um, events. So I think it would be good then to report back to the committee on the approaches in general. Um, I think you have the decision in front of you. Okay, I now give the floor once again to this thing is that we have an uh nous proposons la chose suivante. Est-ce qu'on peut arriver jusqu'au point neuf et dix? Nous proposons d'intervertir les points 9 et 10, parce que si on regarde le point 7, le point 8, c'est des demandes à l'État parti. Et puis brusquement, euh, on a lancé un appel. Donc il vaut mieux avoir 7 pris l'État parti, 8 pris l'État parti, et puis le paragraphe 10, le remonter en 9, de façon à ce que, ça soit, que les demandes à l'État parti soient toutes... Euh, voilà, que le 10 devienne 9. Ensuite, le, 10, euh, le, le 9 devient 10, bien évidemment. Et le, ajouter un paragraphe 11 insiste sur l'importance d'assurer une coordination efficace de tous les efforts en vue de la restauration, virgule, la reconstruction de la reconstruction et la conservation du patrimoine culturel syrien, 
avec la, la participation effective de l'UNESCO. Évidemment, nous aurions préféré dire sous l'égide de l'UNESCO, mais nous ne pouvons pas imposer à tout le monde que ce soit sous l'égide de l'UNESCO. Mais évidemment, l'idée, c'est que ce soit sous l'égide de l'UNESCO, si possible. Voilà. Thank you, Lebanon. Now, I'd like to open the floor on the proposed amendment by Lebanon. I see no objection. Now, I'd like to adopt the draft decision as a proposed amendment. Uh, para by para. Para one through para four, I think uh, there is no amendments. Any objection? One, two, three, four. Adopted. Para five, six, seven, eight. I think there are no amendments, no revisions. So I see no comments, no objection. So it's adopted. Now, para nine. I see no objection. It's adopted. Para ten is the original formulation, so I think no objection. It's adopted. New para eleven. Any comment? Any uh, objection? I see none. It's adopted. Para, new para 12, 13, 14, same as original formulation. Any objection? I see none. Para 12, 13, 14 are adopted. Now, I'd like to invite you to adopt the general draft decision 41.7a.50 as amended as a whole. Are there any comments, any objections? I see none. It's adopted. Let's move on to number 51, historic town of Sabid, Yemen. I'd like to invite once again Mrs. Nada Al Hassan, just for the introduction. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Je souhaiterais, avant d'aborder les biens yéménites un par un, faire une brève introduction sur la situation au Yémen en général, que euh, l'ICOMOS va également commenter après moi. Mesdames et Messieurs, le conflit au Yémen qui a éclaté, et a éclaté en 2015 a généré une crise humanitaire sans précédent et il continue d'avoir des effets dévastateurs sur le peuple yéménite. Le patrimoine unique et précieux du Yémen subit des dégâts irréversibles à cause du conflit et reste sous la menace d'être détruit par le conflit armé. En juillet 2015, l'UNESCO avait organisé une réunion d'experts qui avait élaboré un plan d'action d'urgence pour la sauvegarde du patrimoine culturel yéménite. Cependant, ce plan d'action n'a pas pu être mis en œuvre car il n'a pas encore bénéficié du soutien financier escompté et l'accès au Yémen est impossible jusqu'à aujourd'hui. 
Notons que l'UNESCO déploie actuellement de grands efforts de levée de fonds, notamment pour des projets alliant conservation du patrimoine et création d'emplois pour les jeunes. Et nous espérons qu'à la prochaine session du comité, nous pourrons vous annoncer de bonnes nouvelles à cet égard. Malgré ces difficultés, l'État yéménite a consenti des efforts louables pour la sensibilisation des populations locales, la formation d'équipes techniques et la mise en œuvre de quelques travaux de conservation d'urgence en coopération à distance avec l'UNESCO, l'ICOMOS et l'ICROM. Toutefois, le manque de moyens financiers et la situation sécuritaire toujours instable du pays sont un frein pour entamer des opérations de réhabilitation des bâtiments fortement endommagés et bien sûr de recouvrement donc, dans le sens large. Comme pour toutes les villes historiques endommagées par les conflits, la réhabilitation euh, donc, nécessite une planification euh, stratégique et intégrée. Cette planification devrait prendre en compte les besoins de première nécessité de la population, leur sécurité, ainsi que les facteurs urbains, sociaux, économiques, juridiques, financiers, techniques, historiques, archéologiques et j'en passe. Elle nécessitera, outre des moyens financiers accrus, des études multidisciplinaires approfondies et une consultation large d'expertise nationale et internationale. Monsieur le Président, l'ICOMOS souhaiterait prendre la parole, s'il vous plaît. Ok, thank you so much for your kind introduction. And now, yeah, ICOMOS, your floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The security situation in Yemen, including armed conflict and socio-economic disturbances, combined with a lack of organizational support and resources, continues to obstruct effective heritage management and physical conservation works. The efforts of the General Organization for Preservation of Historic Cities in Yemen and the local communities in damage assessment, documentation, first aid intervention, capacity building, and particularly communication with the World Heritage Center, UNESCO, Doha, and the advisory bodies are commendable. Substantial additional support for the safeguarding of the Yemeni World Heritage properties and their outstanding universal value is required through increased mobilization of the international community to provide greater financial and technical assistance. Uh, ICOMOS will have some specific interventions on the individual properties. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, ICOMOS. I'm wondering whether ICROM has something to add or nothing. Okay, thank you. Now, I'd like to yeah, invite our committee members to make a comment or questions. Floor is open. Uh. I recognize the distinguished representative of Finland. Uh, you have the Closer. Thank you, Chair. As Finland already last year stated, we would like to thank the State Party of Yemen for its strong commitment in the work to preserve their cultural heritage. The dialogue has continued with the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies, and the State Party has been able to work with damage assessment, documentation, first aid interventions, and capacity building at the affected sites at local level. Bigger issues, such as preparing management plans and implementing the national strategy for preservation of the historic cities, sites and monuments, are however still causing problems. We all wish that the security situation soon will allow a visit of a reactive monitoring mission to the Yemeni properties to assist with the development of corrective measures and the desired state of conservation for removal of the sites from the world from the list of World Heritage in Danger. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Philand, for your, your contribution. Any uh, further comments or questions or interventions on the part of committee members or state parties? I see none. I don't think that Yemeni delegation is present, no. Mm -mm. Okay.
Um, if, with your permission, Mr. Chair, after the general introduction on Yemen, I will uh, uh, talk about the state of conservation of uh, uh, the historic uh, city of uh, Zabid. Uh, le rapport sur l'état de conservation du bien uh, ville historique de Zabid au Yémen se trouve dans le document 7 à ad, uh, page 84 en anglais et 89 en français. L'État parti indique que le conflit armé qui a éclaté en 2015 continue de menacer sensiblement le bien et son patrimoine bâti, ainsi que ses habitants pour lesquels il devient de plus en plus difficile de répondre aux besoins de première nécessité. Parmi les dommages au patrimoine bâti, on relève la destruction d'un centre de recherche agricole situé près de la vieille ville qui s'est traduit par des dommages sur les bâtiments historiques dans la ville à cause de la force de l'explosion. En outre, il rapporte que malgré les difficultés liées au conflit armé et notamment financières, l'État parti a été en mesure de mettre en œuvre certaines initiatives de conservation, dont la restauration de la mosquée al Hachaer, l'amélioration des façades des magasins et des passages couverts du souk, l'inspection des activités de construction et la sensibilité au patrimoine des populations locales. Il invite également dans son rapport une mission de suivi réactif du Centre du patrimoine mondial et d'ICOMOS afin d'évaluer l'état de conservation du bien. L'état parti a indiqué que le soutien international continue d'être essentiel pour la protection de Zabid et pour rendre possible la préparation d'un plan d'urgence pour le bien. Le projet de décision vous est soumis, page 86 en anglais et 91 en français. Monsieur le Président, l'ICOMOS souhaiterait prendre la parole, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Nada. You commence. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The historic town of Zabid was included on the list of world heritage in danger prior to the current conflict in Yemen, owing to serious deterioration of its built heritage and urban fabric. The conflict, adverse economic conditions, and ongoing disturbances have exacerbated this situation and continue to affect both the people and the cultural heritage. ICOMOS acknowledges the continuing commitment of the General Organization for the Preservation of Historic Cities in Yemen to conserve cultural heritage within the historic town of Zabid despite these challenges, including damage assessment, documentation, first aid interventions, capacity building, and ongoing communication with the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies. There has been some incremental progress directed at reversing the decline within the city and better engagement with local communities, but further support is essential. A reactive monitoring mission which can advise on short-term repair works and the desired state of conservation for the removal of the property from the list of World Heritage in, in, in Danger is a priority as soon as the security situation allows. Thank you, Mr Chair. Oh, thank you, Ekrom. Ekomos. And the Chrome has no comment. Okay. I now invite to adopt the draft decision 41, com 7A.51 concerning this property. Uh, I'm wondering whether, uh, Mr. Juma, we have an amended proposal? Or? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We, have, we don't have any proposal for this item. Thank you. I declare decision 41, com 7A.51 adopted. Now we move on to 52, Old City of Sanas, Yemen. I once in, again invite Mrs. Nada to make a Thank you, Mr. Chair. Le rapport sur l'état de conservation de la vieille ville de Sanaa au Yémen se trouve dans le document 7 à Ad, page 87 en anglais et 92 en français. L'état parti indique que le bien continue d'être affecté par le conflit armé et le déclin socio-économique. En septembre 2016, les quartiers d'Al-Madrasa et Al-Bakiriya ont été endommagés suite à, euh, aux dommages déjà subis par le euh, quartier très connu dal qasimi Ces dommages supplémentaires ont été causés par des vibrations des explosions qui ont eu lieu dans des zones environnantes. Malgré le manque de fonds, l'Organisation générale pour la préservation des villes historiques du Yémen, GOFSI, a terminé la documentation et l'étude technique de la zone Al-Qasimi en coopération avec le bureau de l'UNESCO à Doha et l'ICOMOS.
Mais les interventions d'urgence n'ont toutefois pas pu être mises en œuvre en raison du manque de financement et d'accès. La stabilité de deux immeubles de ce quartier est gravement préoccupante car ils pourraient s'effondrer à tout moment après les précipitations très importantes de l'année dernière. Cependant, il est à noter que les habitants procède aujourd'hui à Sanaa à la reconstruction ou la construction tout court de bâtiments dans le centre historique sans considération pour le statut patrimoine mondial du bien. Vous pouvez en voir un exemple sur les écrans. Cette tendance préoccupante est liée à l'absence de système de contrôle en cette période de conflit, bien entendu. Quatre membres des équipes de Gofsi et de l'Organisation Générale des Antiquités des Musées ont participé à un atelier de formation sur la gestion des risques en période de conflit armé organisé par l'ICROM et le bureau de l'UNESCO de Doha. Donc ça s'est passé à l'extérieur du MN. L'État parti a indiqué que le soutien international continue d'être essentiel pour la protection de Sanaa et pour rendre possible la préparation d'un plan d'urgence pour le bien. Ce plan de euh, comprendrait le renforcement des capacités, la conservation, la restauration et la construction d'habitats et d'abris pour la population locale. Le projet de décision euh, se trouve à la page 89 en anglais et 94 en français. Euh, Monsieur le Président, Nicomos voudrait prendre la parole, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Thank you. Now, floor is Nicomos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The old city of Sanaa continues to endure socio-economic disturbances and armed conflicts that are affecting both people and cultural heritage places. Analysis of satellite imagery from December 2016 identified 217 affected structures, of which 33 were destroyed, a major increase since similar analysis in 2015. Major infrastructure, including an important water supply and sewerage project, is currently unable to proceed. There is evidence of inappropriate new construction activity. Although the security situation and lack of resources continue to militate against conservation activities, the World Heritage Centre and ICOMOS have supported reconstruction plans to sustain shelter for the inhabitants, and ICOMOS has provided specific technical advice. The recently prepared ICOMOS provisional guidance on post-trauma recovery and reconstruction of World Heritage properties offers further guidance, but additional training and access to expert advice are also essential. A joint reactive monitoring mission undertaken in response to the open invitation from the State Party is highly desirable as soon as the security situation improves. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Ikomos. And I'd like to invite whether yeah, Ikrom has uh, something to know. Now, floor is open. Distinguished Representative of Kuwait. I thank you, Mr. Chairperson. We would like to congratulate him and on their great effort to protect and conserve our world heritage. And we call on the international community to collaborate and intervene urgently to prevent the great loss that humanity is suffering from as a result of the damage of world heritage sites in Yemen. While the situation is shared with other affected heritage sites in the Arab region, we urge the World Heritage Committee to consider that it is time for us to inaugurate an international reconstruction project for the Arab region, heritage sites and areas of conflict. Reconstruction as an international opportunity for knowledge dissemination across generations and cooperation across regions. Once the responsibility of healing the damages imposed on our heritage is shared between professionals and local communities, it, is, it will be our first step towards narrowing the gaps that cause such terrorism against the right for heritage and memory. Once the young generation participates and carries the responsibility of rebuilding, we can be assured that we built the forefront that will stand against destructive ideologies of our time. Thank you. Thank you, Kuwait. Any other comments or questions? I see none. 
Let's adopt the draft decision 41.78.52 concerning this property. Uh, Mr. Juma, do we have any amended uh, uh, proposal? Thank you, Chairman. We don't have any amendment. Okay, proposed. thank you. I declare decision 41.78.52 adopted. Now it's time to touch upon 53, Old World City of Shibam, Yemen. Let's uh, hear from Mrs. Nada about this property. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Le rapport sur l'état de conservation du bien, l'ancienne ville de Shibam et son mur d'enceinte au Yémen, se trouve dans le document 7 à Ad, page 91 en anglais et 96 en français. L'état parti indique que le bien est toujours exposé aux dommages dus aux pluies et aux inondations et qu'il est de plus en plus menacé par le conflit armé qui a éclaté en 2015. Des bâtiments historiques ont été endommagés par des explosions dans les parties sud et ouest de la ville. Nous n'avons pas de photos euh, donc des, du résultat des dommages, mais juste de l'explosion. L'État parti rapporte en outre que la situation en matière de sécurité et les conditions économiques défavorables sont la cause d'un manque de soutien administratif et de ressources pour les projets de conservation. Malgré ces difficultés, l'Organisation générale pour la préservation des villes historiques de, du Yémen a mené plusieurs initiatives de conservation, comme la formation d'une équipe technique pour évaluer les biens, bâtiments endommagés, la restauration de dix bâtiments historiques, l'organisation d'un atelier pour la sensibilisation de la population. L'État parti sollicite par ailleurs la communauté internationale pour apporter leur soutien financier afin d'établir des plans d'urgence pour Shibam, appelé la Manhattan du désert. Le projet de décision vous est soumis, page 92 en anglais et 98 en, ang en français. Monsieur le Président, Likomo souhaiterait prendre la parole, s'il vous plaît. Thank you. Likomos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The old wall city of Shabam was subject to flooding in 2013, resulting in significant physical damage and degradation. Adverse economic conditions and ongoing disturbances have militated against substantial intervention, and the property is now increasingly threatened and subject to actual damage arising from armed conflict. ICOMOS acknowledges the continuing commitment of the General Organisation for the Preservation of Historic Cities in Yemen to undertake rapid field assessment, conserve cultural heritage, repair damaged buildings, conduct training, raise awareness and maintain communication with the World Heritage Centre and the advisory bodies. A reactive monitoring mission which can advise on short-term repair works and longer-term strategies is a priority as soon as the security situation allows. Training and, expert, and access to expert advice is also essential. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Komos. Now floor is open. I see none. Let's adopt draft decision 41.78.53 concerning this property. Uh, Mr. Juma, are there any uh, amended proposals? We have not received any amendment for this. Okay, thank you. I declare decision 41.78.53 adopted. I now invite Mrs. Nada Al Hassan to read the list of the cultural properties inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger located in the Arab State region, for which the reports are proposed for adoption without discussion. So, Mrs. Nada, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Euh, donc euh, la liste des sites, euh, les, des états de, de conservation des, euh, des sites arabes qui n'ont pas été examinés par le comité sont Abou Mena, Égypte, décision 41, comme 7A32, ville archéologique de Samara en Irak, décision 41, comme 7A35, ancienne ville de Gadames en Libye, 
décision 41 comme 7 à 40. Site rupestre du Tadrar Takakus en Libye, décision 41 comme 7 à 41. Lieu de naissance de Jésus, l'église de la nativité et la route de pèlerinage Bethléem en Palestine, décision 41 comme 7 à 42. Palestine, terre des oliviers et des vignes, paysage culturel du sud de Jérusalem, bâtir en Palestine, décision 41 comme 7 à 43. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, thank you very much. If there is no objection from the Committee on those State of Conservation Reports, I declare the decisions read out adopted. I would, I would now like to ask whether any observer delegations or NGO would like to express themselves about one of the properties for which we have adopted the decision without discussion. I see none. Thank you. I don't see any more comments. We can now proceed to the next region, Asia Pacific. We are now taking up 57 historic center of Shahriz Shah Viz, Uzbekistan. I now invite Mr. Feng Jing, chief of the Asia Pacific Unit of the World Heritage Center, to present the reports on the state of conservation of the cultural properties located in the Asia and the Pacific region and open the floor discussion. Uh, Mr. Feng Jing, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in view of the critical issues at this site, the oral presentation may be a bit longer. And uh, the, so, dear committee members, details of the critical conservation issues identified for the historical center of Shak Siabs are summarized in working document 41-COM-7A ad on pages 101 and 105 of the English version and the pages 107 to 112 of the French version. Before the present session, a debriefing meeting was held with the representative of the Uzbek homeland delegation to UNESCO. The committee may recall that in July last year, the property was put on the list of world heritage danger due to the following threats. First, large-scale urban development projects carried out without informing the committee of uh, or commissioning a necessary heritage impact assessment. Secondly, demolition and the rebuilding of traditional housing areas in the property. Thirdly, irre irreversible changes to the original appearance of a large area within the historical center. Fourthly, significant alteration of the setting of architectural monuments and the overall historical town planning structure and layers. And lastly, absence of conservation and management plan. The state party submitted a state of conservation report in December 2016 and responded to some of the requests made by the committee. At the invitation of the Ministry of Culture and Sports of Uzbekistan, from 9th to 12th of December last year, a joint World Heritage Center e-commerce reactive monitoring mission assessed the state of conservation of the property. The mission reviewed particularly the scope, extent, and impact of the work carried out within the property as part of the state program for complex measures of development and the reconstruction of Shaksiab City. 2014 to 2016, and how this has impacted adversely on the property's outstanding universal value. The mission was requested to make a full assessment of the overall threats to the OUV of the property as a result of the work undertaken 
as part of the redevelopment project. The aim was to understand whether or not, so whether or not comprehensive mitigation measures could be identified in collaboration with key local, national, and international stakeholders that might allow for the reversal or mitigation of these threats, or whether the OUV of the property has been so substantially damaged that the entire property can no longer manifest the OUV for which it was inscribed. The negative interventions of the development program noted by the reactor monitoring mission were summarized in the mission report and also in the present working document. While well, work on the redevelopment project was eventually halted following the committee request last year, the mission could only reach the conclusion that key attributes of the OUV have been damaged to such a degree and for the most part irreversibly that the OUV for which the property was inscribed can no longer be conveyed. The mission concluded that there did not appear to be any possibility to recover sufficient attributes to justify the OUV that existed at the time of inscription. Nevertheless, although recovering sufficient attributes to justify the OUV identified at the time of inscription seems impossible at this stage, it is therefore recommended that the committee invite the state party to provide further details and documentation to allow an assessment of what, if anything, parameters uh, could be recovered, although there remain concerns as to what parameters might be developed for recovery work. On the basis of this documentation, next slide. On the basis of the documentation requested, an assessment could be made by ECOMOS as to whether there is potential for a renomination of the property or a significant boundary modification, including some of the monuments and some of the remaining urban areas, <coughs> or whether the property has deteriorated to the extent that it has lost those characteristics which they determined its world heritage status and should therefore, in line with paragraph 192 of the operational guidelines, be deleted from the world heritage list. And there is a need to reach a solution on the way forward as quickly as possible. The World Heritage Center, ICMOS, and ICROM recommended that a decision in this regard be taken by the World Heritage Committee at its 42nd session next year. Mr. Chair, dear committee members, the draft decision 41-7A57 can be found in working document on page 104 of the English version and page uh, 110 of the French version. With your permission, Mr. Chair, ECOMOS will now provide comments on this property. The Honorable Minister of, the, of Culture of Uzbekistan is also present in the room who may provide additional information. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Jing, uh, for your kind of presentation on Historic Center of Shari Shabiz. And uh, as proposed, now ECOMOS, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The reactive monitoring mission report concluded that the destruction of the town center and the lowering of the ground level in order to construct a public park had torn the heart out of the center of the town. Shakri Saab was inscribed for a combination of monumental timurid buildings and tightly clustered urban dwellings within the remains of an encircling town wall, all of which was considered at the time of inscription to have survived here in a way that had no parallels in Central Asia and the Islamic world. 
This was the Timurid city based on much earlier foundations, evidence for which lay within a mound at its center near where the two main roads crossed. All of that has now been destroyed. The monumental buildings have been disengaged from their urban surroundings. The Timurid town planning and the integrity of the town has been lost. All the tightly packed vernacular buildings in the oldest part of the town have gone and the archeological layers destroyed. What we are left with is an ensemble of monuments within a public park. The mission was able to carry out detailed consultation with stakeholders, including representatives of the town's mahalas. It also undertook site visits to both the destroyed areas and those remaining, and inspected material on the project provided by the state party. The mission report was thus not lacking in ample evidential details. The key findings of the mission were that the attributes of outstanding universal value have been damaged to such a degree, and for the most part irreversibly, that the outstanding universal value for which the property was inscribed could no longer be conveyed. In the center of the town, there are no houses or any urban life, as you saw on the first images on the screen. Just an open park extending some two kilometers from the Aksarai Palace in the north to the Doris Tilavat complex in the south and encompassing some 70 hectares, within which there are a few tourist buildings along one side and beyond the remaining houses and streets are cut off by walls and therefore are not visible. Large numbers of families were moved out of the town to the surrounding area as part of the work. Although the mission report concluded that there did not appear to be any readily available possibility to recover attributes sufficient to justify the outstanding universal value for which the site was inscribed, it nevertheless recommended that the state party should be invited to provide further details and documentations to an allow an assessment of what, if anything, could be recovered, or to suggest whether a major boundary modification might be a possibility. On the basis of this, an assessment could be made by the committee at its next session as to whether the property had lost its outstanding university, uh, universal value and should be deleted from the World Heritage List in accordance with paragraph 192 or whether other options might be pursued. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ekomos. Uh, Mr. Joaquin Obikrom, you don't have anything to know. Before we move to the adoption of the draft decision, I'd like to open the floor. The floor is open. Distinguished representative of Lebanon, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Cette histoire est véritablement très triste. Mais je pense que nous pensons que la responsabilité n'est pas seulement celle de l'État parti ou des personnes ou des organismes qui ont décidé ce, les travaux concernant ce qu'on appelle le programme d'État de mesures complexes pour le développement et la reconstruction de la ville. Il est évident que ceux qui ont établi ce plan, qui ont décidé de démolir les maisons traditionnelles, les structures urbaines dans le centre-ville, d'abaisser le niveau du sol, de créer un grand parc urbain avec des monuments au milieu, pensaient qu'ils faisaient bien. Ils ne savaient pas que ce qu'ils faisaient était mauvais. Ils ne savaient pas que ce qu'ils faisaient était une destruction du patrimoine. C'est très clair que pour eux, c'était de vieilles, de vieux quartiers de, euh, de, qu'il fallait évidemment enlever pour mettre en valeur les monuments. Bon. Le problème qui se pose, c'est que où était le comité à ce moment-là Comment notre système de rapport périodique n'a pas fonctionné Comment le système de suivi réactif n'a pas fonctionné Et qu'on se trouve à découvrir cette situation dramatique une fois, une fois que c'est trop tard. Je pense qu'il faut vraiment se poser la question de est -ce, comment faire 
pour que notre système, le système mis en place par la Convention, le système normalement qui avait été mis en place pour essayer d'éviter de pareilles situations, comment faire pour qu'il puisse justement éviter de tomber dans des drames pareils que s'est-il passé Je voudrais savoir au niveau du suivi, du, 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 des rapports périodiques, par exemple. Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé Pourquoi Pourquoi nous n'avons pas découvert cela avant Merci. Merci beaucoup. Sur ma liste, Finlande, Hollande et la République Korea. Maintenant, je vais donner le first. Finland. Thank you, Chair. As was already found out by the Joint Reactor Monitoring Mission in March 2016, and then again confirmed by the mission in December 2016, there has been drastic and irre irreversible damage to the city score. Finland supports the views of the World Heritage Center and ICOMOS, and thereby also the draft decision including the mention of possibly deleting the property from the World Heritage List in 2018. In the light of the information currently received, it is, however, alarming that the reactive monitoring mission introduces a possibility of a significant boundary modification, even though there has been demolition of a two-kilometer swath of the old city, the destruction of almost the entirety of one of the historic Mala district, as well as the removal of two to two and a half meters of the archaeological layers from the site. This might give other state parties an indication that irreversible decisions can be taken and work commence on major projects because there is always a possibility to correct the damage through a significant boundary modification. On the other end of the scale, some properties are threatened with endangered listing over pure visual impact issues for which we still don't have a proper guidance. As a committee member who should base its decisions on objective and scientific considerations, this imbalance makes it very difficult to deal with such different cases. Thank you. Thank you, Finland. Now I give the floor to distinguished delegate of Poland. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, last year, the committee requested a reactive monitoring mission. The mission took place, the report is public and uh, very clear in its findings. We, of course, may keep the site on the list and probably we will do uh, and look for justification for renomination and significant boundary modification, as it is suggested in the draft decision. But we do should have in mind that with such a proposal, we say that if a pro if a part of the property loses its values by a change of the boundaries, the problem can be solved. What is more important, to some extent, we question the committee's original decision concerning identification of values and their justification at the time of, uh, of inscription. We should remember that our role is to encourage, not to discourage, state parties in their efforts to protect the properties of outstanding universal value. Thank you. Thank you, Poland. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Republic of Korea. You have the floor, madam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We are deeply concerned and worried at the analysis of the Secretariat and advisory bodies regarding the state of conservation of the historic center of Shakriyabs, of which we have inscribed on the danger list just last year. The constructive comments made by the delegate of Lebanon certainly would guide us in better equipping our system in the future and should be looked into for possible improvements to deal with these extreme cases. Such a large-scale change afflicted on the overall heritage regarding the material change without any heritage impact assessments of documentation conducted in a deliberate manner should be considered as a very serious situation. We would like to strongly request the State Party to, pro to provide the advisory bodies and the committee of the documentation and reports that were previously requested, including the assessment of changes to the historic districts and the current detailed information of the town center as well as a master plan of the city. Also, 
we think there should be careful approaches to the redevelopment project and intensive conservation work, including some reconstruction, which would compromise the authenticity of the property. At this point, the Republic of Korea supports the current draft decision. Thank you. Thank you, Korea. Now, uh, Portugal, followed by Azerbaijan. Now, I give the floor to Portugal. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je serai très bref parce que je crois que, avec uh, son éloquence habituelle, notre collègue libanais avait déjà dit l'essentiel. Euh, et je prends aussi quelques commentaires qui ont été faits par d'autres délégations. Euh, nous sommes devant une situation qui est effectivement très triste. Nous sommes devant un, un bien euh, dont euh, il n'y a plus de, 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 de possibilité de, de récupérer, euh, même avec euh, une énorme élasticité euh, dans, les, dans les procédures. Euh, donc c'est tragique, c'est tragique. Et reste la question que notre ami M. Tabet a posée, qui est très importante. Qu'est-ce qu qui s'est pas passé comme on s'attendait Il y a des questions des méthodes d'accompagnement, d'interlocution avec, avec les, les, les responsables de, de ces sites qui doivent être, qui sont sans doute mises en cause ici et qui devrait être, être revu. Parce que euh, je crois que ce serait très, très, très dommageable si on, on, on répétait cette situation euh, dans un futur euh, pas très éloigné et que nous soyons alors confrontés avec d'autres euh, éliminations de, de la liste du patrimoine. Euh, donc... Euh, je crois que ceci devrait euh, nous servir de, 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 de raison, de, de point de départ pour une réflexion sur les, 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 les méthodes, les, les techniques, les façons euh, d'accompagner euh, euh, ces processus qui ont à voir avec euh, ces biens menacés. Euh, je vous remercie. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Azerbaijan. Mr. Ambassador, you have a floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Of course, we, we all recall the, the last year's decision and the situation with this property, and we were all concerned uh, uh, with the development on the, on the, uh, with regard to the conservation of the property. Uh, but uh, the state party took some efforts. They provided the state uh, conservation report. And according to this state conservation report, we see that uh, some uh, efforts uh, were put in place, namely the works uh, according to these state programs were suspended. Uh, the special commission to investigate this issue was established. Uh, heritage impact assessment was uh, provided uh, to the, the World Heritage Center, although it was done very late when some of the works on reconstruction were irreversibly impacted uh, historical uh, uh, image of the city impacted the badly the OUV. But I think we have to recognize uh, the efforts and also the understanding of the situation by the state party and their willingness to, to, co to, to work and to cooperate with the World Heritage Center and advisory bodies. And as uh, I, I would also support what a distinguished delegate of Poland said that we should uh, discourage rather we should encourage rather discourage the state party on this issue of course there are many things should be done and uh, i would invite the state party to comment on the situation and maybe to provide more details 
apart from that was reflected in the State Conservation Report. And given the fact that there is a presence of the Honorable Minister of the Uzbekistan, we would, be, we would appreciate to listen from their delegation uh, what they think about this. Thank you. Thank you, Azerbaijan. Now I give the floor to distinguished delegate of Kuwait. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it is such a regret uh, to witness a gradual deterioration of not only this uh, special site, but uh, the rest of the World Heritage Sites. Uh, as we uh, shared the concern with our distinguished colleague of Lebanon about, uh, about this situation, uh, I think we need to rethink the, eff the efficacy and the effectiveness of our system and governance and uh, also uh, the reactive approach we've been continue on undertaking for uh, pro the protection of the sites. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments? And the floor on the part of committee members. I see none. Now I'd like to invite distinguished representative of Uzbekistan. You have the floor, sir, to answer the question. The members of the committee, the government of Uzbekistan is planning the implementation of several actions based on the recommendation of ICOMAS in order to preserve the historic center of Sheikhizabs in the World Heritage List. The main objective of such measures is to maintain outstanding universal value of the historic center of Sheikhizabs. Measures include essential amendments to the national legislations or protections of heritage creations of the department for protections of the medieval architectural monuments at the Sheikh Reserve town municipality, utilizations of te traditional technologies or preservations of urban housing and streets within protect area and buffer zone. New management plan of the historic center of Sheikh Reserves will be considered by the government of Uzbekistan by the end of this year. Monitoring of the heritage preservations will be carried out in close consultation with UNESCO World Heritage Center and ICOMAS. Thank you, Your Honor. Any other comments? Questions? Interventions? No. I live alone. Okay. I recognize Lebanon. You have the floor, sir. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Vous m'excuserez de demander la parole une deuxième fois. Mais je pense que le comité a le droit de savoir qu'est-ce qui s'est passé. Nous voudrions avoir, pour la prochaine réunion du comité, un rapport présenté par le secrétariat pour nous expliquer pourquoi et comment une telle, un tel drame a pu se produire sans que personne ne se rende compte. Alors, nous demandons, s'il vous plaît, qu'à la prochaine réunion du comité, il y ait un rapport détaillé du secrétariat pour qu'on comprenne pourquoi cette chose est faite et quelles sont les mesures qu'il faut prendre pour, de façon à ce qu'à l'avenir, ce type de drame ne se, euh, euh, ne se répète pas. Merci. Okay, I see no more uh, interventions, and I do hope that yeah, we heard the very important questions and very legitimate concerns expressed, and all these questions and uh, legitimate concerns expressed by our committee members yeah, will be duly taken into not only uh, in draft decision and to it will be conveyed to the Secretariat. Okay, thank you.
As I see no more uh, interventions, now I'd like to invite you to adopt our draft decision 41 com 7A 57 concerning this property. Yeah, Mr. Juma, as usual, we have, do we have uh, some amend, amended proposals? Mr. Chairman, we don't have an amendment on this item, except if you... Okay, thank you. Monsieur le Président, je pense qu'il faudrait dans, le, dans la décision demander au secrétariat de fournir pour la prochaine session okay. un rapport détaillé sur euh, les raisons pour lesquelles le système de euh, rapport périodique et de suivi réactif n'a pas fonctionné. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tabe. I think it's uh, very relevant and legitimate concerns. So I think that it should be answered by uh, some responsible from Secretariat, Mr. Jing. Or... Thank you very much. Uh, I think this is a, a good suggestion, so this will be added to the uh, um, to the uh, draft decision. The Secretariat has taken note, but I would like to make some general comments. We have several processes under this convention. As you mentioned, the Delegate of Lebanon uh, mentioned periodic reporting and reactive monitoring. There is paragraph 172. Whenever the state party is undertaking major projects, the Secretariat needs to be informed. I would like to tell you that this is a very rare occasion. Very few states parties actually inform the Secretariat in in advance of major decisions taken. We actually get more information from uh, civil society, NGOs, etc., which we then send to the state party. I would like to inform you about this. Secondly, on periodic reporting, not all of this information is included into the periodic reporting. Um, as you are well aware, we, are, um, we had a reflection on the process of periodic reporting, uh, which concludes this year and which will come up later this week, so there are improvements in the processes, and I think also for reactive monitoring there can be further improvements in the process. But my plea to all of you, please, please use paragraph 172 to the extent possible. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Director Hosler. So now, let's move to adopt the draft decision. Is that how you have? A... Yes, we have to. We have to. Uh, uh, to nous, nous devons uh, finir le paragraphe 13, n'est-ce pas? Uh, ou alors on laisse au secrétariat le, la liberté. Non, peut-être qu'il faut l'écrire. Demande au Centre du Patrimoine Mondial de uh, fournir pour la 42e session. du Comité du Patrimoine Mondial un rapport concernant les euh, comment on peut appeler ça les euh, 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 non les euh, Concernant, non, ce que je voulais dire, c'est expliquer pourquoi les rapports périodiques et les, euh, le système de rapports périodiques et de, ré, et de, et de euh, reactive monitoring euh, n'a pas pu éviter un pareil un rapport concernant les, euh, les imperfections, pas les imperfections, les, allez, aidez-moi, les, les, le dysfonctionnement, voilà, le dysfonctionnement, oui. du système de rapport périodique et de euh, euh, mon dit réactive monitoring de euh, suivi réactif du système de rapport et de, euh, concernant les systèmes de, et de suivi réactif euh, par rapport à ce bien.
concernant ce bien. Voilà. Okay, thank you, Lebanon, for your proposed amendment. And before opening the committee members' comment or questions on this proposal, I'd like to give some give floor to e-commerce. E-commerce, you have the floor. Okay, now the floor is open. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see a uh, distinguished representative of Portugal. Yeah, you have the floor, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. President. No, I agree, with, I agree fully with, uh, with the suggestion uh, made by Lebanon. I just wonder, as I, as I implied in my previous intervention, this is a much more uh, general problem that we have. So, uh, of course, it should be here when we are addressing this specific property. But I think that we should have some express also this concern and this request and perhaps, uh, uh, you know, draw the conclusions in terms of future action, perhaps in the general decision we take concerning what, what is the name, the state of conservation of world heritage properties in the, in the uh, Chapeau uh, decision. Thank you. Richard? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Um, as you know, uh, the decision uh, number seven will stay open until the 11th of July. So if there's any suggestion, we would be happy to take it on um, for this one. Okay, thank you, Director Hosler. Uh, now it's time to adopt the draft decision. Uh, once the uh, Lebanese delegation proposes some amendment uh, from para one to para four without any revision, so I declare it's adopted. From para five, six, seven, eight, there are same formulation as the original draft decision, so they are adopted. Nine, para ten. And can you scroll up? Up to 11. Uh, same as uh, draft, original draft decision. They are adopted. Para 12, same as before. It's adopted. Para 13, the Lebanese proposed amendment. Are there any comments or objections? I see distinguished representative of Jamaica and followed by Tunisia. Now I give the floor to Jamaica first. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, we fully support the recommendation put forward by the distinguished delegate of Lebanon. We, however, have a challenge with the wording uh, shortcomings. It is our view that it suggests that there is no responsibility of the state party in this matter. Um, as was just noted by Dr. Rosler, um, it is not uh, squarely at the feet of the, of the World Heritage Center. We're therefore suggesting that uh, we consider the following wording, a report concerning the clarifications of the processes followed associated with the periodic reporting and reactive monitoring and future actions. So we're recommending that we remove shortcomings and it reads clarifications of the processes followed associated with 
and it continues. Okay, thank you, Jamaica. And now I give the floor to uh, delegation of Tunisia. Merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est juste une petite modification de forme pour éviter de répéter le mot concernant. Donc, à la dernière ligne, relatif à ce bien. Suivi réactif relatif à ce bien pour ne pas répéter. Merci. Okay, thank you, Tunisia. And are there any uh, further comments? I see none. So it's my intention of adopting the uh, proposed amendment by Lebanon and uh, no, slide. There is a problem in French, it doesn't work. In English, it's, it works. Uh, clarification of the processes followed, associated with, mais en français, la clarification des processus suivis, associés, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Uh, Des processus liés, oui, des processus liés. Il faut enlever suivi, alors. Des processus liés au rapport périodique et de suivi réactif, le point. Peut-être rapport au pluriel, au rapport périodique et de suivi réactif relatif à ce bien. Merci. Okay, I think a slight yeah, modification just if followed by uh, Lebanese delegation, we can adopt the, the draft decision 41 come 7A57 as amended. Are there any objection? So I declare the decision was adopted. Now, I'd like to invite Mr. Feng Jing to read out the list of the cultural properties inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger located in the Asia Pacific region, for which the reports are proposed for adoption without discussion. And Mr. Jing, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The following cultural properties inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger located in the Asia Pacific region for which the reports are proposed for adoption without uh, discussion. They are number 54, the cultural landscape and archaeological remains of the Bamiyan Valley in Afghanistan. Number 55, mineral and archaeological remains of Jam in Afghanistan. And number 56, Namando Ceremonial Center of Eastern Macronesia, located in Federal State of Macronesia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much. If there is no objection from the committee members on this state of conservation report, I declare the decision read out adopted. I would now like to ask whether any observer delegation would like to express themselves about one of the properties for which we have adopted the decision without discussions. I see none. I don't see any more comments. Uh, we are very fast. We have successfully completed Item 7A, now we want to move on to item 7B. Dear colleagues, as for the examination of item 7A on the state of conservation of properties inscribed on the list of world heritage in danger, we will discuss first the report concerning natural properties 
followed by mixed and cultural properties. The World Heritage Regions will be presented in the same regional order as for item 7A. First, Europe and North America. Second, Latin America and the Caribbean. Third, Africa. Fourth, Arab states. Fifth, Asia and the Pacific. Finally, we, as we did from, uh, for item 7A, in order to improve the transparency of our process, once we reach the relevant agenda item, I'd like to first ask committee members who have requested a, spe a specific state of conservation report to be opened, uh, opened for discussion to take the floor and explain the reason why they felt important to discuss the report. I will also ensure that we keep the debate focused on the specific issue raised. Okay, having said this, now we will move on to Doñana National Park, Spain. I'd like to now give the floor to the delegation of the Portugal to present to the committee members the reason why it requested to open the State of Conservation Paper report on Doñana National Park, Spain. Mr. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We did indeed ask for the issue to be reopened, as we have noted some discrepancies between decision 39.7b.26 uh, and the draft 41.7b.9 uh, on a number of key issues related to Doliniana National Park in Spain, which may affect the understanding of the exact and current state of conservation of this property. Um, in, in, uh, briefly, because this is a very uh, extensive dossier, um, uh, we would like um, uh, to ask for more accurate information of, from UICN and the Centre. Two reports that were not requested to the State Party by 39.com7b26 uh, and thus not included in the uh, in the documentation provided to committee members. Now, uh, the issues concern are the dredging project, which is referred in paragraph three of the decision, which was cancelled, which was in fact cancelled by the Spanish Supreme Court, and Spain has reiterated its commitment not to authorise the project and confirm to remove any mention in the next revision of the hydrological plan. So the Centre's recommendation has been fulfilled, and we believe there is thus no need to ask the State Party to permanently commit to cancelling something that it has already cancelled. Another issue has to do with the aquifers. Uh, regarding paragraph 4, the reference to the report of the Guadalquivir Hydrographic Confederation on Doñana Aquifer is neither complete nor exact. Another <coughs> point relates to the water management plan. Spain has conducted regular monitoring approved and approved the water management plan as requested by the Centre in 2015 and started its implementation. Therefore, it would be important to clarify which elements inform the proposed draft paragraph 5 which recalls that the declining condition, and I quote, of the Donana aquifer are considered as potential danger, uh, end of quote, since the declining condition has already been addressed by the State Party as stipulated in paragraph 6 of 31, 38 COM. A fourth uh, issue has to do with gas extraction. extraction. 
The State Party has mentioned in its report that all gas extraction and storage projects located outside the site have the necessary environmental impact assessment and that even though one project has not been authorized in order to protect the OU OUV, a second round would merit a similar decision if the same criteria apply. We would like more accurate drafting on this issue and the recognition that Spain has implemented. In fact, it has even gone beyond the recommendations. Um, the fifth point has to do with the mining project. Re uh, 39 COM requested a risk preparedness plan in the event of the reopening of the mining project prior to the commencement of mining operation. There is no reopening of the mining project, only a research project. We do not understand the link between the research project and the request of assessment of cumulative impacts of the research project in the strategic environmental assessment in paragraph 7 of the draft decision. Um, Concerning the Agro Dam, uh, as stated by the State Party, there is also no project to be evaluated. Uh, on paragraph 9, the analysis and conclusions of 41 COM, there is a request for a report on the state of conservation to be submitted by February 2018 for a report to the committee in 2018. That means only six months for the reporting on urgent measures which in environmental matters is indeed very short and has non-significant impact da data for reporting. It would be more logical, Mr. President, to report to the 2009 uh, um, uh, WHC session as that will give Spain one and a half year period to report, which is also sh short on this issue but is coherent with the uh, usual two-year two cycle of revisions in uh, World Heritage Committee. Finally, as the ground for potential danger listing is the absence of action by the State Party to reverse the status of depletion of the aquifer, which has been addressed by Spain, we request the suppression of the phrase, and I quote, in view to considering the listing, uh, end of quote, already in place, uh, sorry, as there is no legal ground for that proposal on the Convention. Um, so, for all these reasons, uh, we would like to open the debate on draft decision 41 COM 7B.9 in order to clarify what is requested from the State Party in response to decision 39 COM 7B.26 as well as to acknowledge of the implementation by the State Party of the recommendations including in the latter decision and I thank you Mr. President. Uh, sorry. Okay, for uh, Mr. Ambassador, please continue. Sorry, no, no, we, we have, we have sub submitted uh, uh, amendment to the draft decision, and we would like, uh, through you, Mr. President, to, when you deem it appropriate, uh, for the State Party to uh, comment on this issue. And I think it would be very useful that we had it on, on the earlier part of our debate rather than on the later part. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Now, uh, let me remind you, we are now taking up uh, item Doñana National Park, Spain. So, I, on my list, there are several uh, speakers, Lebanon, Kuwait, Indonesia, Cuba, Turkey, and Vietnam. So, once again, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, just uh, try to focus on Doñana National Park. Okay, I give the floor first to distinguished representative of Lebanon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In order not to repeat the statement, uh, in fact, it was an outstanding analysis made by uh, the distinguished representative of Portugal. We fully agree with this scientific and rigorous analysis, and of course, we support the opening of the debate. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lebanon. Now I give the floor to Kuwait. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous soutenons la demande de l'Espagne d'ouvrir le débat sur ce site à la réponse et à la mise en œuvre des autorités espagnoles aux recommandations du Comité de patrimoine mondial lors de sa session à Bonn, en Allemagne. 
Selon son évolution en 2015, la suite de, euh, de Nana a été con, euh, confirmée comme état assez protégé et qu'il joue encore des valeurs universelles qui ont contribué à son inscription sur la liste du patrimoine mondial. On a soutient quand même la demande de euh, la délégation de Portugal. Merci. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. Now the floor is on Indonesia. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Indonesia takes note on the report made by the advisory body and would like to commend the hard works that have been done by the advisory body in providing the comprehensive yet applicable recommendations to the state party. Indonesia also would like to commend the government of Spain on its continuous effort in protecting Donana Natural Park and takes note on, uh, with pleasure on the improvements made by the government within the property, notably the increasing size of the park in 2016 and the establishment of a new plan for irrigation network, which is believed will further enhance the situation of aquifers near the park. In this regard, Indonesia acknowledges the strong commitment by the government of Spain to implement the decision of the committee. We encourage the government of Spain to continue its close work with the advisory committee to implement the recommendation. However, Indonesia is aware that several information given by the government of Spain concerning on the positive development are not included in the draft decision. In this regard, we would like to invite the government of Spain to give further information and clarification to the committee concerning the factual condition and development within the Donana Natural Park. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. Now on my list, Cuba, Turkey, Vietnam, Zimbabwe, and there are some more speakers. So I now give the floor to distinguished delegate of Cuba. Sí, muchas gracias, señor presidente. Nuestra delegación de igual modo desea apoyar la propuesta que hizo el embajador de Portugal y vemos de muy buen eh, tino que la delegación de España pudiera dar mayor información sobre, sobre este tema y en un momento posterior eh, daremos también nuestra visión mucho más técnica sobre el expediente en sí mismo. Muchas gracias. Okay, thank you, Cuba. And now give the floor to Turkey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will not be repeating what uh, distinguished uh, ambassador of Portugal said, but most of the issues have been addressed by the Spanish government, and Doniana has uh, still outstanding universal value intact. There's only one area that maybe we should be discussing, and this is a good opportunity, by the way. We've been having informal information from various organizations or the institution um, about the Doniana activities. So this is a good chance that the uh, state party could address directly to the committee members. And the, the issue that I would be more, more interested, these uh, illegal wells um, still you know, large numbers and how the Spanish government will be dealing with that. So if they could address in the uh, hydrologic plan in, in the revised version would be very useful. Uh, I believe that the, the waters used from the wells are free to, uh, as, as, as much as they could be using, maybe a charge to the water uh, usage will be reduced the uh, excess of uh, water drain from the aquifers. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Turkey, for your intervention. Now, uh, Vietnam followed by Zimbabwe. Now, I give the floor to Vietnam. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous rejoignons euh, l'analyse de l'ambassade du Portugal. Notre délégation a pris note avec plaisir des actes entreprises par l'État parti d'Espagne pour répondre aux demandes du comité, à savoir l'engagement de l'État de ne pas autoriser le projet de dragage. Euh, la confirmation que le projet d'extraction de gaz sont tous à l'extérieur du bien. Les initiatives supplémentaires ont été mises en place pour améliorer la connaissance sur l'état des eaux souterraines de Donana et pour améliorer aussi cet état des eaux souterraines. 
Euh, ainsi, nous soutenons les modifications du projet euh, de décision proposée par l'ambassadeur du Portugal. Je vous remercie. Now I give the floor to Zimbabwe. Thank you, Chairperson. Zimbabwe supports the proposal by Portugal to open debate on this matter. Uh, Zimbabwe also recognizes that the state party has addressed the recommendations made by the committee in Bonn. We agree with the draft decision. We agree that the draft decision as it stands does not allow the state party enough time to prepare the state of conservation report. We also support the request to hear directly from the state party on the steps that they have taken on this matter. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Madam Investor. Now on my list, Philippines, Republic of Korea, Peru, Kazakhstan, Tunisia, Jamaica. Now uh, Philippines first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the premise that danger listing should not be seen as a sanction, but as a tool to reinforce conservation, we encourage the State Party to take a constructive view on the matter. At the same time, since significant progress has been documented of the State Party taking concrete action to address threats to the property, and that the Committee shall continue to review of various concerns as reflected in the draft decision, we can support the amendments to be presented on this property. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Now I give the floor to the uh, delegation of the Republic of Korea. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Republic of Korea welcomes the continued efforts and co cooperation between the State Party and IUCN. There are several issues addressed in the SOC report for Donyana National Park, and I wish to uh, ask a question to the State Party which would get, guide us in adopting a decision. We would like to receive confirmation from the State Party on their commitment not to authorize the dredging project of the Guadalquivir River in the future. We recognize the grave situation of causing irreversible damages to the extensive environment if groundwater extraction continues. And we would like to emphasize the importance of expediting the implementation of the special management plan of ir irrigated zones with the objectives of controlling and reducing groundwater withdrawals. Therefore, Mr. Chair, with your permission, uh, we would like to uh, hear from the State Party regarding their commitment and status of implementation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Report Korea. And now I give the floor to distinguished representative of Peru. Gracias, señor presidente. Queremos eh, destacar y eh, agradecer el informe presentado por la Secretaría. Asimismo, queremos expresar que eh, reconocemos los avances y las acciones eh, asumidas por el Estado parte en la preservación del Parque Nacional de Doñana. Queremos sumarnos a la propuesta hecha por el embajador de Portugal a fin de que poder, y secundada por ya muchos países miembros del comité, para poder escuchar la opinión del Estado parte concernido. Creo que su opinión, sus planteamientos y sus acciones nos darán una mayor claridad de lo, del Estado real también de, de, y de la intención del gobierno y de asumir nuevas responsabilidades. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Now, Kazakhstan. Dear Mr. Chairperson, uh, since this is the first time our delegation has taken the floor, I would like to convey our sincere gratitude to the host country and to the Secretariat of the World Heritage Center for their dedication and hard work in preparing this session. The delegation of Kazakhstan fully supports the opening of the debate and the amendments to the draft decision proposed by Portugal. We recognize these proposals as an additional stimulus for the State Party to continue its significant progress in the process of protection of a unique ecosystem of Danyana National Park. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Tunisia. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La Tunisie souligne avec satisfaction les efforts menés par les autorités espagnoles au sujet du parc national de Doniana et les encourage à les continuer. C'est pour cette raison que nous soutenons la proposition du Portugal. 
Und denke ich denke, ja, nach uh, Flo ist und Jamaika. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jamaica supports the proposal by Portugal to open debate on the matter and thanks the Secretariat for the report. Jamaica commends the state party's efforts, which include the confirmation that dredging will not be allowed in the Guadalquivir River, River and the halt on the Marisma Oriental Gas Project, which is located close to the boundaries of the property. The draft decision conflicts with some reports from the state party, and we would welcome the opportunity to hear directly from the state party on this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Jamaica. Uh, on my list, there are two more speakers, Azerbaijan and Finland. And it's my intention that now we close the speakers list here. So are there any? OK. I now give the floor to Azerbaijan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Azerbaijan uh, echoes the comments made by the distinguished delegate of Portugal in recognizing the efforts of the Spain with regard to the conservation of this uh, site, namely uh, with uh, regard to the dredging of the Guadalquivir and the commitment of the Spanish government to <clears throat> not to authorize or budget uh, the project. Then, uh, with regard to the uh, gas projects and the environmental authorization uh, for the gas, uh, gas projects and the assessment report provided in this regard. And also, uh, with regard to the mining, uh, where, uh, according uh, to the information we received, and that uh, this mining project uh, needs to be also uh, environmentally assessed in order to evaluate the risk preparedness plan and to ensure the compliance with the recommendation of the mission. Azerbaijan also joins the other uh, members uh, of the committee in uh, encouraging further to well, encouraging the state party to work further with the World Heritage Center and the IUCN in terms of the water use and management. And we support uh, the changes in the draft decision as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Now I give the floor to the distinguished delegate of Finland. Mr. Chair. Finland welcomes Spain's announcement to cancel the dredging project in Guadalquivir River. We are, though, concerned of the declining state of the area's aquifer because it is the foundation of the whole ecosystem. And as Turkey, we would like to hear from the state party how they are going to address the long-term water management regime. Finland supports Portugal's amendments and we have also submitted a minor amendment to the draft decision. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. And Poland, have you requested the floor? Okay, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just briefly, I would like, we would like to support what have been proposed by Portugal, and it would be, as well, we see very useful to hear what the State Party would like to say. Thank you. So now everybody expected to hear from State Party. Uh, I now give the floor to State Party of Spain. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Muchas gracias, distinguidos delegados, por darnos la oportunidad de poder explicar en, ante el comité los esfuerzos y el compromiso que tiene nuestro gobierno para la protección del patrimonio. En este sentido, y a la luz de los comentarios que se han hecho, creo que es el tema de la gestión del agua en el que más nos ha sido solicitado. Queremos decir que desde 2015, desde la decisión de 2015, España aprobó un plan específico de eh, ordenación de, de regadíos con la comunidad, en el que se estudian distintas medidas para, eh, tener en para eh, mejorar la situación de los acuíferos. Y hablamos en plural porque es un tema excesivamente técnico y quiero resaltar que las masas de agua que están en el sitio de Doñana están 
en buen estado. Sin embargo, conscientes de la necesidad de mejorar la zona, la, la, la zona del acuífero que se sitúa en, en lo que se llama la corona norte de Doñana, se ha adoptado dicho plan que ya se está ejecutando, además de medidas extraordinarias. Respecto a los pozos ilegales, tras procedimientos administrativos, puedo decir que a día de hoy se han cerrado 305 pozos ilegales. Se han tomado medidas extraordinarias para incrementar las aportaciones de agua a los acuíferos, entre otras eh, con una aportación de 4,99 hectómetros. Hay nuevos instrumentos de planificación hidrológica que han permitido mejorar el conocimiento de las masas de aguas, hábitats y ecosistemas. Se han dado también incentivos para la modificación de los cultivos en las zonas siempre fuera del eh, sitio de Doñana y, además, se ha hecho una adquisición de una, una, de un una finca adicional que permitirá recuperar 6,8 hectómetros de derechos de extracción de agua, cerrando así otras 11 captaciones privadas. Estamos, estamos, por lo tanto, trabajando en la gestión del agua, adoptando medidas a nivel regional y también con la colaboración de las instituciones centrales. Y lo que quiero señalar es que eh, hemos ido cumpliendo con cada una de las recomendaciones, tanto de la decisión de 2015 como con las de la misión, como la misión de 2015 como las del Comité de Bonn. Y en ese sentido entendemos que, puesto que hemos ido cumpliendo con las mismas, eh, pedimos que se... Estamos dispuestos a seguir colaborando, a enviar en un informe de estado de conservación para 2019 y sí que nos hubiera gustado tener ese diálogo que tanto se ha hablado en esta sala hace dos días, un mayor diálogo con los eh, órganos de evaluación que lamentablemente no ha sido posible hasta esta sesión. Quiero reiterar, por tanto, el compromiso de España en la protección de Doñana y quiero reiterar también mi agradecimiento a todos aquellos expertos que han tenido ocasión de entablar ese diálogo con nuestra delegación. Muchísimas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Now I'd like to invite uh, some of the states or NGOs. Okay, I recognize upstairs uh, from NGO. I give the floor to. Uh, you have the yeah, your floor, madam. I have to do something. Working. Ah, okay, thank you. So thank you, Chair, for the opportunity given to WWF to address the plenary on this very important issue, Doñana. Let me please take this chance to thank the firefighters that worked day and night to control the fire that threatened Doñana were hit at site just one week ago. I've been very lucky to know Doñana as a child. The endless landscape of the wetland, the smell of the chamomile prairies in the spring, the sound of the feathers of the flamingo's wings flying over my head. I was very lucky to ring birds. I can still recall the soft cold feel of the mother under my feet and those tiny weightless chicks, their long legs and their clumsy attempts to fly. Very lucky. I'm here today because I want that special place to continue living. I am representing the hundreds of thousands of people that have joined our petition online that have participated in our origami migration, of which here you have a sample, to ask for a future for Doñana. Doñana is threatened. We see it in the continuous decline of the groundwater levels, in the decline in the number of species, in the decline of endangered bird populations. Doñana is threatened. Threatened by 3,000 hectares of illegal farms that overexploit the aquifer through more than 1,000 illegal boreholes. Threatened by the dredging of a river dredging that has been suspended but never cancelled, threatened by underground gas storage that has not been properly evaluated, and by the reopening of a mine that already caused the worst environmental disaster in the history of Spain. Doñana is threatened, but Spain has the capacity, the legal framework, and necessary resources to ensure a future for it. That is why WWF strongly encourages the committee to adopt the decision on Doñana without any amendments. We want a future for Doñana, and we don't want it to depend on good luck.
So I now yeah, ask Mr. Juma, uh, are there any uh, amendments? We have amendment from distinguished guests of Poland and Finland. As you can see, we have, uh, this is a draft decision of nine paragraphs. I mean, all, almost Portugal and Finland. Almost all uh, paragraphs have been modified. If you look from the screen, we have paragraph one, paragraph two have not been modified. But paragraph two, three has been modified, the first part by distinguished guest of Portugal. Now it reads, welcome the state party commitment not to authorize the dredging project to deepen the Kaldiv Kaldavik River and the distinguished the uh, second part was deleted by distinguished delegate from Portugal, but distinguished delegate from Finland, Finland have added it and take notes of the state party statement to remove this project from Kaldivakir Pazin hydraulic plan when in its next revise, revised. And paragraph number four has also been modified. You can read it. Take note with concern. A conclusion of 2016 annual report of Kadivarik Hydraulic Confederation, which confirmed that the current level and the use of underground resource in significant part of the groundwater body, if sustained, will compromise the good stand of underground water bodies and terrestrial ecosystem. And they've deleted this part. And the second part starts and request to expedite the full implementation of special management plan of irrigated zone in the north of the forest crown of Doniana and submit to the World Heritage Committee the findings of the current initiative on monitoring. They will delete the word modeling of hydraulic process to inform the status of Doniana equifier when they are available. Number five also has been recasted. Recall that the continued declining condition of Doniana equifier if not reversed, could represent a potential danger of outstanding universal value in line with paragraph 180 of operation guideline. Number six, the only first part has been modified. It has been added by Portugal. Welcome the decision of state party not to authorize the gas and storage project in Marisma Oriental, and the rest has been kept as it is. Six, Seven paragraph, Mr. Chairman, has not been modified. The eight paragraph has been later modified. Request further the state party to present up to date CER for the Kualdivarik River Basin to ensure that it includes a specific chapter of OUV property and submit to the World Heritage Center. And then number nine has been also modified. The first part and the second part has been deleted. Finally, request the state party to submit to the World Heritage Center by the December 2018 and up to the report of the state of conservation of property and the implementation of the above for the examination of World Heritage Committee on its fourth third session in, 19, in 2019. This is what has been modified, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Juma. And I recognize some uh, delegation of Finland. Uh, you have a floor, madam. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor again. Could you show paragraph four, please? Uh, in the middle, uh, we have request to expedite. I think we need to uh, say whom we are requesting. We can't just, so we have to say request the state party. To. That would be the language uh, the committee should use, in, in my view. Thank you, Chair. Okay, now uh, I give the floor to Cuba. Uh, otherwise, we will adopt the para by para, and uh, yeah, you can yeah, make uh, some yeah, comment. All right. Now I'd like to invite you to yeah, take a decision. Uh, there are, as proposed by, introduced by our reporter, there are so many uh, changes and amendments. So. Let's examine para by para. 
Uh, para number one, no changes, so I consider it adopted. Para number two, same as original form, so it's adopted. Para three, okay, yeah, Cuban delegation. Gracias, Presidente. Quisiéramos agregar en el párrafo 3 que se agradece la información aportada y que alienta al Estado parte para seguir trabajando en los aspectos relacionados con el manejo del recurso agua. Y eh, mantener entonces, eh, esto permitiría mantener el Estado del bien. Gracias. Thank you, Cuba. Any uh, further comments? Para three, adopted. Now we move on to para four. Uh, Mr. Juma, uh, you have something? There was a proposal from uh, Cuba in paragraph three. Can you, can you propose how do you want it to be? Uh. Agradece la información aportada y alienta al Estado parte a seguir trabajando en los aspectos relacionados con la gestión del recurso de agua. Para garantizar el buen estado de conservación del sitio. Gracias. Pudieran ponerlo como un párrafo independiente. Ok, Portugal. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I don't have any dispute with the suggestion by Cuba, but I, I, I think it doesn't fit in that paragraph. So, uh, uh, because there we are talking about, uh, specifically about the Guadalquivir issue, so perhaps we could have a paragraph four uh, with, with the Cuban suggestion, and then four would become five, and, and so forth. Mm. Okay, so uh, Mr. Ambassador, your proposal is uh, your uh, para uh, four in blue becomes uh, para three, and the Cuban proposal is a merged or separate uh, will become a para four. Can you clarify? Okay. It's not really for me to clarify because I didn't suggest this paragraph. Uh, uh, I'm just saying that I, I can go along with it, but I think it does not fit in, in, the, in the previous paragraph that deals with the Gadal Kivir. So but we should have an autonomous, as there is, as it is already there. Uh, but it should, but it should be, it should be uh, inverted. I think four should become three and three should become four. Okay, to Cuba, any comment? Gracias, señor presidente. Justamente era lo que decíamos en nuestra propuesta, presentarlo como un párrafo eh, separado para agradecer y enfatizar en, en el agradecimiento a la información dada por el Estado parte y no modificar el sentido del párrafo que proponía Portugal y Finlandia. Muchas gracias. Okay, thank you, Cuba. And now give the floor to Finland. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a clarification uh, about the Cuban amendment. Uh, in the end, we have continued water quality. Uh, we are wondering, is this a translation or language issue? Because as we have understood, the water quality is, is not the issue. Maybe the natural water balance or something like that, uh, according to, to the experts. So just a clarification. 
uh, was it a language issue or thank you okay thank you and the cuba accepted your proposal am i right sí evidentemente ha sido un problema de traducción muchas gracias okay thank you so para three the new para three is adopted And the new para four proposed by Portugal, Finland, no objection, is adopted. And water management. Uh, uh, yes. uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Okay, Portugal. Yes, uh, sorry, Mr. President. I think you you took us all too quickly with your the uh, presidency of our committee. Uh, but I think that we've left something out uh, uh, in the meanwhile. Now, uh, um, uh, which is the... Water balance, yeah, water management. No, yes, okay. There's, there's somewhere uh, where it's water management and not water balance. Where, I don't know where it is, but there's... Oh, number four, okay. Okay, Finland, it's all right for you? All right. Then that... Water management. Okay. Okay, with the uh, water management is uh, adopted. No? No, Finland agreed. Okay, Finland. I'm, I'm really sorry, but now it's not working at all. We have uh, resource management and natural water management. So what is it we are going to manage? Uh, I can't see the logic here. I'm sorry, but I don't have any suggestion to, let's see. Okay, Maybe. okay, uh, Portugal once again. Yeah. Uh, I think our Finnish colleague is right. And I think that perhaps we could uh, make this, that slightly shorter. Welcomes the information provided by the State Party, encourages the State Party to continue working on enhancing water, resource uh, management. management, full stop. And no. I think Cuba can go along with that too. Mm. Okay, we are now concentrating on para three. Uh, there are three speakers, Turkey, Cuba, Croatia. Now I give the floor to Turkey first. Uh, I think the water quality was an important issue there. Uh, you could manage the water, but the quality may be polluted by you know, ag agriculture or other activities. So I like to keep that quality there. Okay, thank you. Now I give the floor to Cuba. Sí, gracias, señor presidente. Yo voy a hacer lectura despacio de lo que propusimos. El tema de la calidad puede ser muy importante, pero no fue la propuesta de Cuba y si alguien está interesado puede hacer otro párrafo en su nombre. Agradece la información aportada por el Estado parte y alienta a seguir trabajando en los aspectos relacionados con la, la gestión del recurso del agua para mantener el estado de conservación del sitio. Fue la propuesta de Cuba. Han aparecido otras cosas ahí. Pero le pido, por favor, que regresemos a la versión inicial y si alguien tiene algo que enmendar, bueno, lo haga sobre nuestra versión. Muchas gracias. Okay, thank you, Cuba and Croatia. Yeah, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, we agree with Cuba proposal. The uh, ambassador Portwell. Yes, we, we also agree, and I think we got lost in the, in the translations. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So the para three as amended, adopted. Now para four. I see no comments. 
No objection. It's adopted. Para five. Are there any comments, objections, questions? I see none. Para five adopted. New para six. I see no objection is adopted. Para seven. I see none adopted. Para eight. It's the same as before, original. Okay. It's adopted. Para nine. A slight revision, modification. I see no comments. It's adopted. Para ten. Are there any comments, objections, questions? No interventions, so it's adopted. So, so I now invite you to adopt the draft decision 41.7B.9 as a whole as amended. Are there any objections? I see none. It's adopted. All right, uh, before completing the uh, morning session, I now uh, invite Mrs. Anatole Gabriel to read the list of natural properties inscribed on the World Heritage List and located in the Europe and North America region. Okay, Kazakhstan. Dear Mr. Chairperson, uh, yesterday our delegation submitted to the Secretary two amendments to the draft decision 41.7b1 on Belavesia Forest. To discuss their possible approval, we would like to open the debate on the subject. Thank you. Okay, I think it's uh, uh, Dr. Rosolo. Yeah, you can respond to your question. Thank you very much. Um, on the uh, list of uh, sites opened for discussion, uh, I just want to clarify that we are all on the same information. We sent in seven on the second dispatch of 2nd of June, so that committee members could inform us of any uh, opening of discussion. Then we sent to all committee members in all states in 7 ref on 26th of June. Then there were some openings at the bureau session and um, we, the chairperson recalled this at the committee session. And then the INF 7 REV 2 was distributed to all committee members yesterday after the opening of this discussion. Just to remind you, we cannot take on any amendments to state of conservation reports not open for discussion, but the committee is of course free to open it. But you cannot send amendments to us in case you have not opened it. So if I understand Kazakhstan correctly, they want now to open the case of Bielovesha Forest, which is uh, point, um, point one, although we are already on point nine in our list of documents for the Europe and North American region. Is that a clear understanding? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rosler. Yeah, let's continue. Yeah, just quickly, uh, just read out the reports are proposed for adoption without discussion. So, you have the floor, uh, Mrs. Anatole Gabriel. I'm back to this one mm. in the afternoon. Afternoon, okay. To so, this one, we will come back in yes. the afternoon. You read the other ones. Mm. You read the other okay, ones. Okay, I will read out on behalf of Secretariat. Yes, okay. Yes. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Donc, les 
Les états de conservation pour la région Europe et Amérique du Nord qui euh, ne feront pas l'objet d'une discussion seront Wood Buffalo National Park Canada, Primeval Beach Forest of the Carpathian and the Ancient Beach Forest of Germany, Slovakia and Ukraine, Golden Mountains of Altai, Russian Federation, Lake Baikal, Russian Federation, Natural System of Wrangell Island Reserve, Russian Federation, and Western Caucasus, Russian Federation. Thank you. And Privice Lakes National Park, Croatia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much. If there is no objection from the committee members on those state of conservation reports, I declare the decisions read out adopted. This one. All right. Afternoon. Okay, I see uh, no objection. Uh, it's uh, decided. Okay, and now on good follow, I think yes. You see uh, one of. Okay. I recognize on observer member. Yeah, I give the floor to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I speak on behalf of the Northwest Territories Métis Nation with respect to the Wood Buffalo National Park property, which was uh, just mentioned. We're a recognized Aboriginal government representing Indigenous Métis peoples from three communities in Northern Canada in and around the park. This has been and continues to be part of our uh, traditional homeland. The history of our Métis experience in the park has been a difficult one. In 1923, shortly after its establishment, a decision that was not supported by the Métis or other Aboriginal people, our Métis hunters and trappers and their families were unwillingly removed from this newly established park. These were Métis who'd engaged in traditional practices and livelihoods for generations in ancestors of our current members. In our view, the state party has only recently reluctantly acknowledged this history, as well as recognizing the challenges the park faces and the change in approach is required. We therefore particularly welcome and fully support the committee's decision, and particularly the state party shall, quote, ensure a process enabling fair, transparent, and meaningful involvement of all legitimate stakeholders and rights holders including First Nations and Métis, based on mechanisms agreed to by these stakeholders and rights holders. Therefore, in full accordance with the UN DRIP, we look forward to the State Party's engagement with us, the Métis Nation, along a path to reconciliation. There's many other important requests that have been made of the State Party, and we fully support them. And Mr. Chairperson, we appreciate this opportunity to participate in this session and look forward to working with the State Party in a timely manner to provide for concrete implementation of the requests of the committee. Thank you. Observer. Okay, thank you. And I recognize another observer member. Uh, I think I'd like to close the speaker's list here. So I give the floor to you. Hello. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. We would like to acknowledge the interest shown by the committee and thank those members who are willing to help strengthen the decision. After 30 years of Canadian inaction to, to pervasive problems in Wood Buffalo, we felt it was critical to have a strong uh, decision as possible. Unfortunately, Canada has demonstrated resistance to making even the most modest alterations to this decision. Constructive attempts at dialogue and resolution with Canada aimed at strengthening decision have been entirely dismissed. We do not believe Canada's claim that they are committed to a genuine partnership and have yet to see any actions from Canada to demonstrate it will protect Wood Buffalo in the manner required under the Convention. It has now been 11,000 days since Canada told us they will fix the Delta. It has been over 10 years since they said they would address the health concerns in my community where we have high rates of cancer. 
Our community is not convinced that Canada is acting in good faith. Indeed, Canada's actions have contradicted the committee's 2015 decision, which requested the state party not to take any decisions related to development projects that would be difficult to reverse. By giving Canada such a generous timeline, more adverse developments will occur. The Miccosu Cree First Nation, the park is already, already in danger. Our health, quality of life, and ecological integrity are, of our delta is diminishing due to increasing water loss, contamination, and the prioritization of industrial development over the local well-being. As the original petitioners to the committee, the Miccosu will continue to fight for the ecological integrity of the world's largest freshwater delta. We are committed to the protection of the outstanding universal value of this world-renowned site, as the Convention requires. Moving forward, we will require the committee's strong support in holding Canada accountable to protecting Wood Buffalo National Park. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, is the, as a last speaker, yeah, I have to close the... Uh, NGO and in Canada on Tyson Okay, yeah. So after another observer, and uh, I have to give the uh, floor to Canada, so I have to close really here uh, this morning session. So as briefly as you can, I give the floor to observer yeah, member. Thanks a lot, distinguished chairman. Distinguished delegates, I want, from the name of Greenpeace Russia and a group of Russian NGOs, I want to raise a question regarding the Western Caucasus <coughs> site. And it's important to say that during long period... Uh, excuse me. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's another matter. So uh, please, uh, yeah, please, uh, please address this issue in the afternoon or sometime. Yeah. I now give the floor to Canada. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As this is the first time that Canada has taken the floor at this session, I would like to th also thank our po Polish hosts for their warm hospitality and the committee for consideration of this state of conservation item. Canada welcomed the report of the mission to Wood Buffalo National Park, which took place in September 2016. Canada also welcomes the adoption of decisions 41COM7B2 and is committed to responding to the recommendation it puts forward. The findings of the mission and IUCN's recommendations to the committee represents a call to action. A true response to this report would only be possible through collaboration at all levels within Canada, between federal, provincial, and territorial governments, through engagement with Indigenous partners, partners and through consultations with industry and other stakeholders. You have just heard from two of our 11 Indigenous partner, partners involved with this property. The Government of Canada is pleased to continue its work with all of these partners to develop an action plan guided by the mission recommendations and the World Heritage Committee decisions. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to provide this clarification. Okay, thank you, Canada. And uh, I think uh, I have to complete the morning session. Uh, and this afternoon, we will... Yeah, we will start this afternoon session with the uh, observer who requested the floor just ago. And uh, uh, number one, yeah, Bialodi Biche, Forest, Belarus, Poland. Thank you so much for your contribution and cooperation. And, announcement now. and uh, there is an announcement from the Secretariat. Go quickly. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. You can see the announcements for the side events uh, on the screen, uh, screens in front of you. Uh, you have uh, the event organized by the Korean National Commission on Heritage Reconstruction. Here is the invitation. And uh, you have the, another event by IUCN and IPAC on indigenous peoples uh, starting at uh, 1.10. Uh, an opening and exhibition uh, will also take place at level minus two. Thank you very much. <laughs>